Colorado High School Activities Association football is on Morgan County's B106 and the Eastern Plains Sports Network in our 22nd season. It's the Fort Morgan Mustangs taking on the number one ranked Roosevelt Rough Riders from Legion Field in Fort Morgan. As we mentioned before the break, I'm John Beltran with Kevin Rohde and Brian Nickel. And uh, this is the game that we've been waiting for for a while, gentlemen. Kevin, the Rough Riders at 7-0 and the Mustangs at 6-0. and But Fort Morgan has not played a full game this year. Last week, indicative of that against Mountain View, they came out strong in the second half. And, I mean, let's face it, there can't be any slip-ups tonight. Here come the Mustangs. Okay, we're not getting Kevin here for some reason. Let's see, Brian, are you with me? Am I there? You're with me. All right, let's see what Kevin will work on you. Not sure why we're not getting Kevin here, but... All right, Brian, anyway, let's talk about this game. I'll try to get Kevin hooked up. I'm not sure what happened there. Yeah, this is the game they've been looking forward to since the playoffs last year when they got beat by that one point in that quarterfinal game. Um... But Roosevelt has come back bigger and stronger, it seems like, than what they were last year. So we'll see what they have. They we didn't think they would match up well last year. We'll see if they do that again this year, if the Mustangs can stay with them. And the uh, Mustangs will not be able to have any turnovers. If they have their A game, they need to bring it tonight. That's right. I was going to say, not only is this a game we've been looking forward to, but no disrespect to any of Fort Morgan's previous opponents this year, but the Rough Riders are going to be a different class of, of oh. game. And and they not only have to play their A game, they have to play their A-plus game and get some breaks, um, I think. That's, okay, that's my well, I think we talked about that. Yeah, I, I, that's a great point, Kevin. I think if they are even in the turnover battle, I think Fort Morgan can't win this game. I think they need a plus two at least, uh, at, le at least a plus two in the turnover battle. And Brian and I were talking about before we went on air because we know that Fort Morgan's had trouble stopping the run all year. So when you have tr uh, trouble stopping the run, you need one statistic that is in your favor, and it's got to be the turnover category. Either that or just stop them on a couple really big plays, you know, like a third and three, you know, stop them where they have to punt. You know, you're not going to stop them every play, that's for sure. Well. Meade had a 7 nothing lead in Johnstown about three weeks ago. And then Roosevelt took the lead. It was 9-7 to early in the third quarter. And then they won 37-7. to And what we've seen in Roosevelt's games is that they've gotten stronger throughout the course of every game. And, Brian, I know you have some numbers on the defense where they are just, I mean, they are... They're incredible. Yeah, they've got uh, 17 sacks, 13 interceptions. I mean, it's just uh, it's, the defense is what runs this team here. Uh, they get the ball back to their offense, and the offense goes down and scores. And the good news, Briggs Wheatley has thrown just one interception. That was at Niwot. And I think Fort Morgan's fumbled it twice, once on special teams last week, and then Briggs got hit from behind against Conifer. So the turnovers have been very limited for Fort Morgan, and that's certainly in their favor. Yeah, and Brock Saya, I'm pronouncing that right, for uh, for Roosevelt, he's thrown 20 touchdowns and no interceptions. Wow. Um, nobody, they've had like three different quarterbacks, and nobody has thrown an interception this year. So they're right on with their passing, that's for sure. Kevin, it's dangerous when a team can play smash mouth football, but they've got numbers that Brian just described that can make them extremely two-dimensional. That's right. You, you've you got to uh, choose your poison, maybe, is the term. You know, put enough kids up in the box to stop their run, then they're going to pass on you, play pass, and they're going to run on you. Well, both of you know about coaching. This is a game where Ty Davies and his assistants, I guess they have to outcoach Lane Wassinger and his assistants because Wassinger knows that he's got a little bit better team over there and perhaps a much better team, we'll find out. Right, perhaps a little bit of overconfidence we can hope for, uh, from Roosevelt, but we'll see. Opening kickoff is brought to you by Buildings by Design, the best in the business. Quality, commitment, and experience makes Buildings by Design the only choice when it comes to your next project. The Mustangs will kick off. It'll be Brandon Marquez and Keaton Kaiser and Tucker Peterson. There are two receivers. This is very similar, Brian, to what Fort Morgan does when they send Fajardo back there. Not necessarily with Marquez, 
They'll send Fajardo with Ortega, but Ortega is the leading receiver right now. Yeah, it's uh, it's crazy who they have back there. So, um, you know, they got a threat on kickoff, on kick return. So, you know, you've got to cover this kickoff return. Don't give them good field position to start off with. The Mustangs bunched in tight. Your number 11 guy is on the left hash mark, inside the left hash mark. So they're going to kick it, obviously, up the sideline. And this is a short kick. It will bounce at the 20. It's fielded by Kaiser at the 16, straight ahead, and he's down at the 24. Well, that was nearly a, a late hit there after the tackle was made. And the first Mustang in there was Xander Gleam. And we will check out the offense of the Roosevelt Rough Riders dressed in their road whites, coached by Lane Wassinger, assisted by Donovan Suman, Sean McAvoy, Kate Davison, Chase Klein, Justin Gallus, Tom Craig, Kobe Schultz, Ken Niven, Nate Schwartzball, and Gary Luster. Ty Davies, the head coach of the Mustangs, assisted by Jacob Lund, Tanner Campbell, Drew Davies, Gary Davies, Jim Krekemeyer, Ron Eccles, Josh Langford, Isaac Linker, Tyrone Ortiz, Eric Sherman, and Seth Wolf. Five yards behind center. First and 10 from their own 24. Saya will hand it off and a little stutter step along the left side, back to the inside. First down to the 35. That's Ryan Doucette, one of their nearly 500 yard rushers. A gain of 11. David Number Keller around the football, but. We're going to expect to see quite a bit of that. If there's no reason to throw, Kevin, why do so? That's right. And there, he was out there just dancing, trying to pick his his way to go. You know, one-on-one -on -one blocking, and he went the right way. And I think Fort Morgan's going to just, like I say, going to have to come up with some big plays. They might have to take a chance on defense. Man in motion to the right as Kaiser inside handoff. And a big haul for Doucette along the left sideline to the 50. He's got Ortega to beat a stiff arm, and he spins, and he's still on his feet. And there's a flag down, and Ortega tackles him at about the 25-yard line. I wonder if that was offensive face masking. It would be a gain about 40. Brian, what did you see? Yeah, it was offensive face mask. He grabbed the uh, defender right by the mask. So this will, this will come back. Well, he's going to gain about right. 25 or 30 yards from the 35. Let's see where it's marked off. But the stiff arm, and you can stiff arm, but you cannot grab the opposing team's face mask. And they kind of look for whether his arm stays straight out or not. If his arm starts to come in and he keeps contact with that mask, then they're going to call the face mask. Yeah, he had it. He grabbed it. I mean, you could see it. He had hold of it, and he was jerking him around. It's a gain of 35, though. <laughs> so he still picked up 35 yards in a play. And then a net of 20. So it's first and 10 at the Mustang, 45-yard line. A very good start, as expected for Roosevelt on the opening drive of the game. Roosevelt at 7-0 and the Mustangs at 6-0. The receiver to the outside right is DJ Bradbury. Receiver to the left is Jaden Herrera. Out of the eye. Handoff to set right up the middle. And he's got a yard to the 44. And that's the penetration the Mustangs needed. That was Corey Schlegel, the senior. And the gain is going to be about two. Second down and eight to go. Doucette, three carries for 48 yards already. And I don't think the Mustangs took a chance there. I think they just executed defensively. Yeah, they uh, they did. They they wrapped up like they needed to on that play. And I guess what I'm talking about chances maybe a blitz on a passing situation where you just send somebody. Right. Even though the secondary for Fort Morgan's their strength defensively. I think they're definitely loading up inside. They don't want to be, got, get beat on the dives. Five yards behind center. Kaiser in motion to the left. The quarterback Saya awaits the snap. Five-step drop, looking over the middle, looking now. Here comes the pressure. A jump pass is incomplete at the 40-yard line intended for Caleb Erickson along the sideline. Well, he had him wide open, but a jump pass is very tough to execute. Third down and eight to go. Heck of a lot of time there for Saya, though. He had a lot of time, so that was, you know, that was the uh, secondary on that play that created that play. Yeah, you can't get away with that for too much longer. No. That's why they might have to send somebody, an, a, a blitzer, as Peterson, one of their top two receivers on the outside to the right. Got to watch out for him. He's single team there by Fernando Marquez. Out of the gun, third down and eight. Kaiser again in motion to the left for the Mustang 43. And this will be a play action, a toss out to the left to Kaiser. And he's hit immediately. No gain. But right there to make the play was Levi McCoy along with Fajardo. Uh, no gain, fourth down and eight. Let's see if they go for it. I doubt it. They'll put Fort Morgan in precarious territory. After the pass was caught on that, I don't know what you call that. Just It wasn't really even a screen. It's kind no. of a swing pass. It's the receiver going out. Yeah, but normally yeah. they swing a little bit more towards right. the uh, 
I'd first be, down marker. It'd be interesting to see if this is the first first drive that Roosevelt's had to punt on. On the very first drive, yeah, Bradbury to punt, standing at his own 42 on fourth and eight for the Mustang, 43. Here comes the pressure. He gets it off a very high punt. It's going to be a fair catch. No, Fajardo will let it bounce. It takes a huge Roosevelt roll. It'll be down at the 10-yard line, and that's where the Mustangs go to work here in the opening quarter with 9.32 to go. Well, so far I'd give the defense about a B-plus because you picked up a couple of big first downs, but they held them, and it wasn't near the red zone. That was an event, but don't break. That was, hey, let's hold them near the middle of the field. Yeah, I think Fort Morgan's got to be happy with that first defensive drive. First and 10 here for the Mustangs at their own 10-yard line. They have not run the ball of effectively this year with the exception of the quarterback Wheelie, even Frank Ortega who has seven rushing touchdowns has been good in the red zone but they haven't given him a ton of holes he hasn't had big games on the ground running back is to his right five yards behind center is Wheatley on first and ten Wheatley is going to keep it himself run to his right to the 15 stutter steps to the 20 there's a flag down and Wheatley's out of bounds at about the 32 and that might be a hold over there on Randall Paxton. They were pointing at him. That's going to nullify about a 21-yard gain. And that's exactly what it is. And that's the one thing we talked about just about five, six minutes ago. And Fort Morgan's going to be backed up at about their five-yard line. It's from the line of scrimmage. It would be half the distance. It'll set up a first and 15 because the ball right now is resting at the 10. So that should go to the five. Yep. And that's where it's at. And that was a great play call. But now it's hard to do that twice in a row. Two. They right. try to mix in that call. First and 15 for the five. Mustangs not yet running out of the pistol where the running back is normally behind the quarterback. This time to the right once again on first and 15. Wheatley play action. Looks to throw deep up the right sideline. Marquez is out there incomplete. Well defended by Keaton Kaiser at the 38-yard line in front of the Fort Morgan bench. And normally Marquez can separate, but that was just good defense. And even if the throw was closer to Marquez, it would have been tough to slip it in there. Yeah, I think Roosevelt's defense is pretty stout, and their cover guys are going to be a little bit better than the caliber we've been up against. Well, and that means you might have to go for a screen. We had a screen last week that really yeah. worked out well. A 72-yarder to Frank Ortega to throw him off to let that defense collapse in the quarterback. On second down and 15 for the five. Again, Wheatley this time will keep it himself. Run to his right. Cuts it back, and he's got half a yard. That's about it. He is swallowed up by the left side of that line. They'll give him a yard. Third down and 14 to go. The hit was made by Derek Albin, a junior defensive lineman. Yeah, well, that first play was a killer. Yeah, their defense, is, uh, is as Kevin said, is real strong. So... They, uh, they have the takeaways, and they turn it back over to their offense and let them do their thing. Third down and 14. The Mustangs have it at their own six-yard line. On their opening drive of the game, Roosevelt picked up two first downs, no more. Empty backfield on third and 14. Wheatley looks to his left, pump fake. He'll take off with the football. He's going to be sacked. He tried to take off with the football, sacked at about the four-yard line, maybe the three, by Clayton Robinson, a linebacker. It'll be fourth down. And 17 to go. They'll place the ball just outside the three-yard line, and that's what we're going to see tonight at that Roosevelt defense. If the Mustangs win the game, they're going to have to win like 10 to 7 or something crazy like that. Yeah, it's going to have to be. It's going to be quicker passes than that. It's going to be quick hitters. They're not going to be able to go downfield like they have in the past. Ortega is nine yards deep in the end zone. You need a perfect snap to avoid a safety. That's a high snap. He comes down with it and gets off the line drive. That's a great punt by Ortega and. Peterson tries to pick it up, and he went to his knees down at the 38-yard line because of the high snap. If he comes down and takes his time, that would have been blocked. And instead, Frank, what a heck of a punt. That went for 35 yards, and Peterson corralled it in Mustang territory. That could have been a disaster, actually, for Roosevelt as well because happened with Marquez last week. He tried to pick up something like that deep in their own zone, and luckily... Uh, an interception on the very next play at the one-yard line by Ortega after Marquez committed the violation, set up the 99-yard pass to Frank. Right. Another example of Frank's raw athleticism, you know, that he can just know to grab that ball and punt it away and still get 40 yards on it. First and 10 for the 38-yard line. This will be a gift to Doucette. He's got nothing running laterally to his left. 
boy, two or three Mustangs in on the play, including Jesse Campa and first Timothy Paxton made the initial hit. Second down and 10 to go. And all of a sudden, they're containing Doucette, Brian. Yeah, they are. They're doing a nice job. That front <clears throat> front four is doing a nice job. They're getting some help from those linebacker crews, but they're doing a, a better job this week <clears throat> than we've seen on the run. 7.25 to go in the opening quarter. No score. This is Roosevelt's second drive. Two receivers put out each side. Kaiser is in motion to the right. And there's the inside handoff to Doucette. He's hit in the backfield. Oh, man. That's a good four-yard loss. How many Mustangs were there besides Jesse Campa? He was the first one. But David Keller and two or three others there to clean it up. Third down and 14 to go. How about this run defense? Yeah, I don't know where it's been all year, but they... They, uh, they've come to play tonight, but they, they matched up well with them last year, too. You know, they were so strong. Yeah, um, Fort Morgan, I think, was a little bit bigger in the interior, but you know what? They're playing big right now. Third and 14 for the Mustang, 42 passing situation. Five yards behind center, man in motion to the left is Peterson. Back to throw, setting up a screen that passes caught over the middle. Kaiser with all types of room to the 30. Cuts it back to the middle, first down to the 25. And McCoy's got him at the 22-yard line. Oh, that was set up perfectly. A gain of 20, and the Mustangs did not see that coming. That was almost a little bit of a sucker play there, and Fort Morgan unfortunately fell for it, Kevin. Yep, they took advantage of Fort Morgan being aggressive early on and coming after the passer. And, uh, well, it worked out well for them. And you could see it, I mean, almost from the very beginning, yet Fort Morgan collapsed in on the quarterback. The back's in an eye. Sai is under center. First and 10 for the 22. Deep handoff to set. Stutter steps. He breaks out of a tackle, and he's still on his feet inside the 20 to the 17. For a gain of five, Fort Morgan had some penetration, but there was plenty of traffic in the middle. Brian Doucette on the carry. Sixth carry of the game for Doucette for 43 yards. This game's really going to challenge the emotional well-being of the Fort Morgan players because there's going to be ups and downs, and they have got to get past the downs and get back to, to playing good defense. Perfect night for football, by the way. We are sitting at 61 degrees, second down and five from the 17. Backs in an eye, deep handoff to set up the middle. First down to the 10, scoots out of a tackle, and he's tackled by Fajardo at about the eight. For a gain of nine, first and goal, Roosevelt Rough Riders. Basic football, nothing fancy there. Yeah, they've got a great offensive line. They're busting some holes there to get uh, Doucette free, and Doucette's making some nice moves, too, to get some extra yardage. Did you ever run like that in your day, Kevin? Nah. Okay, just yeah. asking. Yeah, I... Uh, well, I take that back. I think I had a dream once. Right, I, okay, I, that I happens. Run. And dreams can become reality. I mean, maybe not now. First and goal at the eight-yard line. And there is the give on the right side and breaking out of a tackle inside the five to about the four for a gain of four, Clayton Robinson, Clayton Robinson before he's driven back by the left side of that Mustang defensive line. Also coming in was Fajardo from his position. So Robinson with a four-yard gain makes it second and goal, his first carry of the game. Yes, yeah, strong run in there. They... Uh... He got hit there, and he was just driving that pile. And then Mustangs finally got enough people on there to stop him. Under four and a half minutes to go in the opening quarter. Roosevelt with a second down and goal at the four-yard line. Saya now is under center. Backs it an eye. The deep back is Ryan Doucette. Rolling out to his right is Saya throwing into the end zone. Touchdown. A flag is down, though. A flag is down called by Jaden Herrera. Might be rough. Oh, nope. holding, holding against Roosevelt. And I have to tell you, I am stunned they went to the pass on a second and goal from the four as effectively. I know there were a couple of plays near midfield right. where Fort Morgan stopped them, but you just picked up four yards and you risk a penalty a lot more on a pass play inside the five yard line than you would if it was a run. Right, and pass defenses can just pack it in. It's a lot harder to get open. A lot of things, uh, reasons why most coaches will run in that situation and when you commit a holding penalty in a pass it's behind the line of scrimmage that's a 14 yard penalty so it's second down and goal from the 18 yard line nullifying the touchdown clock is not restarted it will not since that play went into the end zone with 409 to go first quarter trips to the left on second and goal high snap Saya looks 
Throws it to his left. The pass is intercepted at the six-yard line. Marquez along the sideline to the 20. Fernando Marquez at the 26-yard line. He shaded the receiver, Herrera, the one who just caught the touchdown pass that was called back. And the Mustangs are in the plus one category in the turnover column. That's what they were needing right there. And, and he was in better position. I mean, he was right in front of the uh, receiver. So that was a great, great defensive play. Why did they call a pass play from the four, and why did Saya throw that ball? This is not uh, a, a lesser school they're playing, especially with that secondary. That, that was one of easier uh, Marquez's easier receptions, yeah. let alone an interception. That's a second interception of the season. He had one against Niwad two weeks ago. So the Mustangs have their best field position on their second drive. First and 10 at their own 24-yard line. Out of the gun, empty backfield. Two receivers split to each side. Briggs, Wheatley, a deep drop. Here comes pressure. Throws the slant. It's incomplete. Right through the hands of Fajardo. That's a high pass. And he had pressure coming from behind. A good pass. That's going to be a first down at midfield. Yeah, that was just a little bit high. He was wide open. Would have made that catch. And maybe got a couple more yards. Thank goodness he got rid of it because he looked like he was going to get walloped. Yeah. And yeah, he's got to sense that pressure. He's got to yeah. step up. You step up, you evade that pressure. But if you sit there like a... Like a target, you know what can happen there. Inside of four minutes to go, first quarter, no score. Fort Morgan and Roosevelt. Roosevelt just turned it over. Brock Sia threw an interception to Fernando Marquez. Second down and 10 for Fort Morgan at their own 24. Have not picked up a first down yet. Wheatley is going to roll to his left. He'll run with a football across the 25. Then he's driven down near the top of his body. Grabbed up high to the 29. And there's another flag down, and that looks like it's going to go against Fort Morgan again on offense. We've had a lot of offensive penalties on both sides. Looks like maybe a hold on Randall Paxton again. Yeah, but that's on the opposite side of the field. Right. Yeah, there's no reason to be holding on this side. Especially when the play's on the other side. And he he was way outside, like he had was trying to get a pancake or something, you know, blocking on a corner. A little bit of a sloppy first quarter. Roosevelt's yeah. had a couple of big penalties, and so has Fort Morgan. And the ball sitting at the 14, second and 20. Yanez is the lone receiver to the right, trips to the left. Ramirez on the inside slot to the left. Wheatley is by himself, standing at his own nine-yard line on second and 20. Wheatley back to throw, and the slant is caught by Marquez across the 15, still on his feet. And then he's dragged down at about the 19, and now we have a stoppage. Is there another flag down? That would be a no, pickup. No, a helmet came off for one of the defenders. Uh, check it, I, the 29-yard line. I have the wrong yard line. It's the 29, not the 19. But the gain is 15 yards to Marquez. Third down and five. That's all they needed. And that pass was not perfect. That uh, Marquez had to leave for that one. Yeah. So a gain of 15 for the 14 to the 29. Third and five for Fort Morgan. Marquez lines up as a receiver now to the right. Yanez to the left. Ortega to Wheatley's right. Man in motion to the left. Play action. Wheatley looks to throw. Deep over the middle, it's incomplete, and Giannis was well covered. He should have gone for Marquez near the Fort Morgan sideline. Giannis up the middle at the 42 was double teamed. They had no chance of completing that. And what it appears to me, I know Fort Morgan's a big play threat, but they can't go, that's going for the home run too early in the game, which they've done more than once, including Marquez here on the first drive. Well, it's kind of like they're doing what the Raiders did back in the, you know, the 70s with that stretch, we've got to just keep throwing deep to stretch out, and then that'll open up stuff underneath. Like we saw, we had two good openings underneath earlier. Right. Okay, they're going to come with a heavy rush here. Ortega standing at his own 15 on fourth and five from the 29. That's a perfect snap. Heavy rush, gets it off, Stamped. and that's off the side of his foot near the Fort Morgan bench. It takes a Roosevelt roll and down at the 42-yard line. And that was not a good punt there by Frank. The first one was fantastic. That only went for 13 yards. And Roosevelt, for the second consecutive time, is starting in Fort Morgan territory. And you can only stop this Roosevelt offense so many times, Brian. Yeah, that yeah. one was uh, actually partially blocked. And that's oh, did he was, get a hand on Yeah, that's yeah, okay. what the ref was saying, yeah. Okay. Because they ran into him pretty hard, and they didn't call the penalty. And okay. said it was 
You got a touch on it. I mean, if that was partially blocked, he got very little on it. I didn't see much. I did not see much. All right, that explains that. So it wasn't that bad of a punt. They bring quite a rush, though, on that. Uh, oh, they're sending about eight or nine. There. Yeah, they got two guys back, and everybody else is coming. First and 10 for the Mustang, 42-yard line. No score. Roosevelt's third drive. We're in the opening quarter. High snap. Saya will run to his right, and he barrels into a defender and dives towards the 37, hanging on for dear life. And making the tackle for the Mustangs was Daniel Serna. It's a gain of five. Saya's first carry of the game. Second down and five to go. Fort Morgan has 16 yards of total offense. And Roosevelt right now has 81 on second down and a short five for the 37. Saya will fake. He's got a first down to the 30 along the right side of the 20. He's got Wheatley to beat at the 10, and he's down inside the five to about the three. That's a heck of a run there for Brock Saya, first and goal. Let's see if that's maybe the two-yard line. It's a gain of 35. Yeah, yeah he, he made a really good move on Braden Pichardo and you know, got him coming inside and just dip, dipped to the outside. And Luckily, Briggs was able to catch him. Well, the only way you stop this team right now is if they commit another turnover or penalty, which they did both of on the previous drive. Under center this time is Brock Saya, first and goal from the two. Hand off to the deep man and down for a loss. That might be Peterson. The deep back. Nope. Let's see who that is. That's that's a different number. That's going to be okay, Cooper Walton. You remember Walton scored the touchdown. I think he scored two touchdowns against Fort Morgan in the playoff game. But it's a loss back to the three. So, so they did run inside the five this time. Well, uh, you do but it they again. lost a yard. So we'll yeah. see if they believe in their running game or whether they're going to go back to the pass. I think they'll probably do it again to stay safe. Second and goal from the three. Three in the backfield. Handoff to the deep back. And Walton trying to squeeze his way by some Mustangs. And I think he's just back to the line of scrimmage. And Fort Morgan just sending everybody there. Guarding against the run. The first hit was made by Corey Schlegel. No gain for Walton. But that's the other surprise. I, you think Doucette would get the football. He's the shifty guy. Walton yep. for the power back. Yeah, they're trying to go right up the middle. They've been real uh, successful trying to go off going outside, but they're just trying to, it's just packed inside and the, they're coming around and tackling from behind. 17 seconds and counting in the first quarter. Third and goal for the three under center. Saya, and we've got a flag down. I don't think that was delay of game. Was that a motion penalty or something? It yeah. was illegal procedure, false a false, false start offense. against Roosevelt. These Roosevelt coaches have just got to be pulling their hair out, you know, coming in here knowing this is a quality opponent, probably the first of this caliber that they've played. They've had some good games, but, uh, you know, to, to come up against this and, and have a team pretty much smack them right back in the mouth. That's the end of the opening quarter with a score. Fort Morgan nothing, Roosevelt nothing on Morgan County's B106 and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Along with Brian Nickel and Kevin Rohde, I'm John Beltran. Let's head to the second quarter. It's a third and goal from the eight-yard line for Roosevelt. No score. That's a referee's nightmare, by the way, going from one eight-yard line to the other at the end of the quarter. But Yeah, funny story. I was up doing the chains at the Prairie game. Of course, they only have a... And we'll finish that yep. here in just a second. Man in motion to the left is Kaiser. Five yards behind center. Hard count. And trips to the left. And now... Did a Mustang jump? No, the left tackle. Okay, <laughs> even better. Another false start. The hard count fooled the offense. All right, after this sequence, Kevin, I want I want to get that story. I want to get that story here. Third and goal from the 13. Brian Roosevelt is showing a, a little bit of, I'm not sure what the word is, but uh, certainly a lack of discipline. Yeah, that's for sure. I'm surprised that they're... Uh, I didn't expect this from him. I listened to the Mead game on the radio. Yeah. And uh, that was the night at Brushby Platte Valley yeah. 41 0. So I was listening more to that because <laughs> figuring the Brush Platte Valley game would be competitive. Third and goal from the 13. Trip to the left. Saya, quick drop. It's going to roll out to his left. Throws off his back leg towards the end zone. Wide open. Is, did he stay in bounds? Incomplete. Marquez on the coverage. 
but that was way in the back of the end zone along the left side to Keaton Kaiser. Fourth down. Now, they've got a good kicking game. Yeah, he held that just one second too long, and that one second led to a step out of bounds. Well, this would be about a 30-yard field goal. And it's going to be attempted by Kelly Parham. Kelly Parham inside the right hash mark. Off the hold of Brock Saya. You remember it was a field goal last year that doomed the Mustangs 17 to 16 with just seconds to go. He's got to go right to left with his kick on fourth and goal for the 13. There's a snap. The kick is up a line drive, and that one is right inside the right upright. It is good. 11.49 to go, second quarter. Roosevelt 3, Fort Morgan nothing. All right, can you recall your story there? Yes. One end to the other. So we get done at the end of the first quarter, and it's only an 80-yard field, and the ball's on the 38, which means it's two yards from midfield. Right. This is six men. Right. And I tell the ref, oh, thank you so much for getting that or, you know, arranged so I only have to go four yards. And he kind of laughed and says, yeah, you never know. End of the third quarter, I was on the two-yard line. <laughs> I had to go all the way to the other two-yard line. So I, I told him, well, it averaged out to 80 yards for the two, so that's not bad. <laughs> well, you got your exercise for the night. Absolutely. And that's uh, So a 30-yard field goal by Parham, 11 seconds into the second, has given Roosevelt a 3-0 lead. And Parham will kick it off. Let's see, are the Mustangs bringing in their... Their returners normally you'd go back That's to the five or ten yard line. For the yes, I'm going to stay seated, but it wouldn't be a bad idea to rise. High school football, you kick off for the 40. All right, now they'll retreat and they'll spread out for this return. Apparently, they've seen something in uh, in film where they just kick it right out of the huddle. Parham straight up to the football. A line drive, Ortega will catch it at the 8-yard line. Looking to his left to the 15 for a seam at the 20. Along the sideline at the 30, he cuts it back and down at about the 32. Nice open field tackle by Peyton Zikomsky, a junior. The return is close to 25 yards. Normally it's 32-33. Eh, this is great field position considering yep. what happened in the first quarter. Right. Each time they get the ball, they're another 5-10 yards farther down the field. So that's good. They need to get some production out of this offense, though. Yes. First and 10 at the 32-yard line. Two receivers out to the right. The Mustangs do not have a first down in the game yet. And that's partially because of penalties. In fact, you know what's sad? They've got more penalty yardage than offensive yardage. 16 yards of offense. They've got at least 35 yards in penalties. Wheatley back to throw, out to his left, caught by Marquez at the 39, and then he spins to the 40, still on his feet, down at the 41. Marquez with some nifty moves, a gain of nine. And what I liked about that play is the tackle was made by Anthony Munoz. It's just a quick hitter right, right. there, just a quick hitter. Yeah, you don't need a lot of blocking. Yeah, it's got to be because they're so they're so quick. They have about 17 sacks on the year, 18 after the one tonight. Second and one, handoff, Ortega, first down. He's across the first down marker driven back. Man, they got to blow that whistle earlier. I mean, they kept driving him back to the 36, and he got to the 43, the 44-yard line. I think that's a generous spot. It looked like the 43, but they'll give him three yards for Frank Ortega. And believe it or not, that's his first carry of the game. You would think he's carried the ball two or three times. Nope. Yep, you'd think so. they got to get these guys involved. First and 10 for the Mustangs at their own 44. Roosevelt leads 3 to nothing with 10.54 to go, second quarter. One versus four matchup. Out of the pistol formation. Ortega behind the quarterback. There's the pitch right to Ortega. He doesn't have any room. He's going to be lucky to gain a yard or two. Man, he just barreled into those defenders and lowered his shoulder to get to the 45, maybe the... Yep, about the 45-yard line, a gain of one. Helping out on the tackle, number four. Yeah, they're just too fast on that play to make anything work on that. Well, their defensive linemen look like they're large size, too. Can't really tell, but... Second down and nine to go for Fort Morgan. 
at the 45-yard line on their own side of the field. They picked up a first down, though. Trips to the left. Two receivers out to the right. Empty backfield. Wheatley, quick drop. Throws over the middle. Incomplete. That was Jose Mosqueda at the 42-yard line. And I don't know if he was supposed to sit in the slot or keep running. But Wheatley threw it like he was to keep running. And Mosqueda didn't get to that point. So I'm not sure where the miscommunication was. That middle linebacker, number 22, was sitting there. He just about got an arm on it, too. And Wheatley is two out of six for 24 yards. Wow, this is an unusual formation. Four receivers to the left and one to the right on third and nine from their own 45-yard line, trailing three to nothing. Wheatley with an empty backfield, five yards behind center. A quarterback draw. He's up the middle to the 50. First down to the 45. And he's driven down at the 43. Oh, that is a heck of a play call and a gain of 12 for Fort Morgan and a first down. I love that play call, Brian. Yeah, I don't think we've seen that this year where they had uh, everybody wide to the left and that left it open up the middle. Yeah, it wasn't much of a draw. It was like a stutter step on first and 10. There's movement on the right defensive end for Roosevelt. That'll be first and five. You know, when they first lined up like that, I thought, man, they've got the numbers to run a wide receiver screen because they only had three defenders out there for our four guys. But then they, you know, had other plans, but hopefully they'll go back to that and take advantage of that mismatch. Elisar Valencia was offsides for Roosevelt. First and five for the Mustangs at the 38-yard line. Clock is running. Off the penalty with 9.15 to go before the break. Roosevelt three, Fort Morgan nothing on a 30-yard field goal. 11 seconds into the second quarter by Kelly Parham. On the inside slot is Ramirez from the 38-yard line of Roosevelt. Movement there. That might be, well. I think that point. was Oscar Ramirez, I think, that jumped. Yep, it was. Now they gave it right back. False start on the offense. Well, the one of the things we talked about on the offset was they have got to play perfect football. And Fort Morgan has made way too many mistakes. To still be in it at only down three is nothing is beyond me. I don't know how we're doing it, but. Yeah, you're right. I'm with you. I am with you. Well, because they've got special talent out there. That's right. why. And they have the one turnover. We talked about turnovers. And Roosevelt's committed some untimely penalties. As well. First and 10 for Fort Morgan at the Roosevelt 43. Two receivers to the left side and one to the right. Wheatley will hand it off to Ortega, and he's going to be smothered in the backfield at the 45 and driven back by about two or three Rough Riders. There was nowhere to run. And he was stuck initially by Derek Aubin, a big junior lineman. Ortega now has three carries for two yards. Second and 12 for the 45-yard line. Ramirez checks out of the game for Fort Morgan. Same formation as they had when Wheatley picked up the first down on a third and nine. Four receivers out to the left side and one to the right. Let's see if Wheatley takes off with the football on a second and 12. Wheatley, quick drop. Here comes pressure up the middle. Rolls to his left, throws over the middle, incomplete. Ortega at the 40-yard line as Wheatley went down to the ground. Way too much pressure put on. And the play took a little too long to, to develop. Frankie was open. I think he would have would have gotten hit in stride. He might have gone somewhere. Well, Cooper Walton was in that backfield. Fort Morgan would go for it if they if it's a fourth and three. If this was fourth and six or seven against any other opponent, you might go for it, yeah. but not against them. You want to win the field position battle. Now you've got a third and twelve at the forty-five. Again, four receivers split out to the left and one to the right. Wheatley back to throw. Plenty of protection. Deep up the left side. Fajardo's out there, oh. and it's broken up. He had it at the 26. That was broken up by Ryan Doucette. That is a tremendous defensive play as Fajardo had it right in his hands. And if Doucette got in there half a second later, it would have been a first down for Fort Morgan. But instead, they'll have to punt on the 4th and 12. And you almost would have benefit, benefited there had that been underthrown. Right. I think that was a little bit high. Uh, Briggs was playing with a little bit of adrenaline, and all of his throws have seemed to be a little bit hot and a little bit high. Uh, but hopefully settles down and hits some of those wide-open receivers. Ortega's at his own 40-yard line to punt. Boy, they're going to be sending the house here. Low snap. He gets it off, and that was not touched. High punt. Fair catch. 
is called. Well, that's an unconventional fair catch. Called it about outside the 20-yard line by Tucker Peterson, right at the 20. He kind of caught it very high like he was a center fielder in baseball as opposed to the basket catch you normally make in football. So Roosevelt with another possession, 7.44 to go second quarter. Fort Morgan did kick off in this game, so that's something that has to be taken into account. It's a 3 to nothing lead for the Rough Riders. Wheatley's been in on defense, but right now he's on the sideline just resting a bit. It's, it's taxing playing the quarterback position. Ortega, though, is out there. Out of the gun. And there was movement yep. by the right tackle. Roosevelt, again, with some very uncharacteristic penalties. First, Again, they had a so-so first half against Meade, Brian, and we know yeah. what happened in the second half. Yeah, they, uh, yeah. they blitzed yeah. them badly, and it was yep. at Johnstown. Yeah, it was 9-7 to seven at half, and then ended up 37-7, to seven, so... Meade was making mistakes, turning the ball over, and Roosevelt was taking advantage of it. But here's the thing. Fort Morgan's been a second-half team this year. Yeah. In four of their six games, Scott's Bluff, Brush, uh, Niwant, and Mountain View, all second-half performances that were outstanding. First and 15 at their own 15-yard line for the Rough Riders. Saya will keep the football. He's got a seam, and he's down after a short gain. Nice tackle there by David Keller at the 17, maybe. 17, Gain of two, and that is containment. That's great containment there as Keller didn't fall for that fake. Remember, Saya just had a 35-yard carry. Second down and 13 from the 17. Meanwhile, the clock continues to roll with 7.15 to go. Second quarter, Roosevelt with a 3 to nothing lead on a 30-yard field goal early in the second quarter by Kelly Parham. The passing game has been not very good. One out of five for 20 yards and an interception. Sai is going to roll out to his right. Plenty of sideline to operate with. Throws off his back foot, and it's going to be tipped and complete. Ortega on the coverage of the 44. Kaiser, the intended receiver. Third down. And you know what? They're finding out that Fort Morgan's secondary is pretty darn good. That's right. Yeah, they're uh, and Coach Langford and his defensive crew um, are doing a did a great job getting them ready for this ball game. That's for sure. Well, the interception was probably a matter of watching film enough times to just know in that situation this is what they're going to do and to step in front of that receiver. Third down and 13 yards to go for Roosevelt at their own 17-yard line. This play could swing the momentum here in the first half. All spread out here. Saya, deep drop, throws along the left side, complete. First down, Kaiser in front of the Roosevelt bench, in front of Mosqueda, makes the catch at the 30 and lunges to about the 32. That was a big, big completion, and that keeps the drive going, and who knows if Fort Morgan's going to touch the football here in the remainder of the first half. That's a gain of 16 on that pass from Saya to Keaton Kaiser, his second reception of the game. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are the owner of a black Honda, your lights are on. First down and 10 from the 33. Again, a high snap. There's the give and a big hole and tripped up. There's Doucette. Oh, that's a huge tackle made by Levi McCoy because Doucette was going to go for about 10 or 15 yards. Instead, he's limited to three. I thought that was going for a while. Yeah, yeah I thought he was the way he hit that hole. But nice job by, by Levi to bring him down. Because <clears throat> they've had a tough time in the past with their tackling, but tonight it's been pretty good. Inside of six minutes to go in the second quarter. Second down and seven to go. Roosevelt at their own 36. Perfect snap. There is Saya with a pitch left. And along the left sideline, a big hole. And oh, almost a late hit along the sideline. Let's see. Who, was that Robinson? Yeah, that was Robinson on the carry. He was driven out of bounds. At the 45. A gain of nine. For Robinson, his second carry now for 13 yards. That's a good play fake there, but the on the option from Saya. Yeah, I think he was the one trying to lay the lick over there on that defensive back. It looked like to me, he tried to put his shoulder down and was delivering the punch. From their own 45-yard line, shotgun formation. Kaiser's in motion. There's a play action to throw. It's incomplete, intended for Peterson. At the 49-yard line of the Mustangs, the throw is a little bit wide of the target. Ortega was there. 
and now they're implementing a little bit more deception on offense. A little fake here and trying to get Fort Morgan off balance and moving in wrong directions. But instead, Saya, at this point, is three out of eight for 36 yards and an INT. So not what he wanted out of this performance. No. Yeah, they're averaging 221 yards passing a game, 206 rushing. On second down and 10 from their own 45. Play action again. The throw of the middle wide open. Peterson first down. Fajardo trying to make the tackle and does. Across the 35 to the 32. And it's a gain of 23 yards. First down again for Roosevelt. Peterson with a second reception of the game. And that was a touchdown saving tackle by Connor Fajardo. Because he was the only one out there. Yeah, yeah. If he, had a, he almost pulled that away from him. But Fajardo got him enough to trip him up. But um, that defensive line has got to get some more pressure on Syed. Well, but now they're throwing in that extra step. It looks like a handoff half the time. And then they throw the ball from the 32-yard line of the Mustangs. Now the throw out to the right is caught underneath. And a stiff arm and down at the 24-yard line. Nice tackle by Mosqueda off the reception by D.J. Bradbury. And to the 12. That's a gain of eight, though. That's a, another nice play. Yeah, they're not messing around anymore. You know, Roosevelt is not me Not that they were messing around earlier. But it looks like their offensive play calling has taken a different direction. Brian, where did this drive start? I mean, this was... Started on their own 15 after the penalty. Well, here we go. Second and two for the Mustang, 24. There's the give to Walton. First down to the 20. This guy is a bull. Across the 15 to the 14-yard line, too easy. A gain of 10 for Cooper Walton. And they have now traveled 71 yards and are 14 away from getting into the land of no hash marks and checking into the game as Adolfo Hernandez for Timothy Paxton, who's got to be gassed out there. First and 10 for Roosevelt. At the 14-yard line of Fort Morgan, five yards behind center is Sia. Now they realign, and I think we had some illegal shift. Oh, did Fort I, Morgan jump? I think, ju I think they jumped when everybody was shifting. Oh, boy, you yep. can't do that. That's not smart. That's not smart. you got to watch the ball there. Josh Langford not happy about that. but And that was the first time I'd seen that tonight where they, where they were lining all of about four or five guys made a shift. And Fort Morgan wasn't ready for it. Roosevelt is smelling the end zone. And the snap goes through Saya. Saya's got a fall on it at the 20-yard line. Another break. Oh, oh man. Kevin, it's just the breaks continue to happen Second for Fort down. Morgan. Well, you know, some had to happen. And it's not over yet. But, boy, you're talking about how the coaches are maybe calling different plays. They were just having their way with Fort Morgan on this drive. But now that has changed. Now you have a second down and 15 at the 19. And back in is Paxton as the Mustangs are platooning defenders to keep them as fresh as possible. From the 19, let's see if it's a passing situation. Walton is the lone setback. Kaiser's in motion. And here is Saya with a football to the 15-yard line. And then he's tackled at about the 14 by McCoy as he backed his body across the 15-yard line. A gain of five. Fourth carry for Saya for 47 yards. Third down and 10 yards to go. Under three minutes remaining in the opening half, Fort Morgan trails 3-0 to nothing to Roosevelt on Kelly Parham's 30-yard field goal with 11.49 to go in this quarter. DJ Bradbury checks in with a play. Brian, they've chewed up time on this drive, too. Yep, just over five minutes. Whew. That's almost half the quarter. Third down and 10 for the Fort Morgan 14. Saya, perfect snap, play action, looking, pressure, throws out to his left. It's caught by Kaiser, snaps out of a tackle, but then he's taken down near the line of scrimmage. Man, he juked one Mustang, but there were others there. Fajardo had him, but couldn't get him. But that's nothing for Kaiser. That goes as a completion of zero. That's the second of three completions to Kaiser that went back to the line of scrimmage. In fact, that's a loss of one. Let's hope this field goal kick goes just a little bit lower than the last one and we get a block on it, maybe you know, hold them to three for the half. From the left hash mark off the hold of Saya, this is Kelly Parham with a 32-yard field goal attempt. The snap is right there. The kick is up, and that one looks perfect from here, and that is good. 
We have one minute and 44 seconds to go, second quarter. And do we have a stoppage for some reason? What happened here? I don't know what they're... I mean, they, 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 it was a double oh, whistle. Maybe Fort Morgan called timeout. But, I, but, but what, what do you need to call made, timeout? Is no, it timeout already? Sense. Yeah, I mean, I don't... I mean, it's like they're looking at that last play, but I guess they're just trying to get their self organized. And well, Fort Morgan's fortunate to end up just down six nothing at half. Well, let's see. Roll, yeah. Let's find out if it's six nothing at halftime. We were going to take a break, but we'll be taking a break shortly. We've got an extended halftime show as we did last week, six to nothing. But still, Brian, that drive on that was a thirty-two yard field goal. Yeah. That's a drive that went seventy yards, and they were they went further. But yeah, they uh, started out on a, with a five-yard penalty, so they had to leave or start from their own 15 yards. Let's all rise for the kickoff. Well, Fort Morgan is going to receive the second half kickoff. They'd like to do something to end the first half like they did last week. Last week, they scored with 2.4 seconds to go on a run by Ortega. That made it a 14-7 game. They were tied with Mountain View as the Mustangs were on upset alert. And Kelly Parham will dash towards that football. A line drive towards Ortega along the right sideline at the 9. Stutter stepping to the 15. Looks for a seam at the 25. Ortega to the 30. Oh, I thought he could break it, but he's down at the 33. A return of 24 yards. Got to go to the passing game right now. I mean, you, you can't run your way. You, you have three timeouts, all three timeouts remaining. I don't think Fort Morgan took a timeout there. No, no I don't know. What, no. I think they reset the clock because I had put down... At the, the end of that drive, it was a minute 37, and they put it back up to a minute 53, so they must have had some time 153, off. okay, yeah. All right, 150, because it was at 144 before, but now it's at 145. Right. And not everything's a Michael J. Fox movie. Or is it the other way around? I don't know. Back to the future. Anyway, or back to the past. All right, first and 10, enough of that clouding around at their own 33-yard line. Roosevelt with two field goals from Kelly Parham. We didn't see the game going in this direction. Out of the pistol formation. Oh, they were definitely offside. No whistle. Rolling to his left. Wheatley throwing. Wide open. Marquez at the 42. Along the sideline to the 50. Out of bounds. They don't need to take a timeout there. A perfect play. And the gain of 20 yards from Wheatley to Marquez. And he's a special receiver out there. That's already his third reception. I shouldn't say already, but it is his third reception for 44 yards. And that play took a little bit of time. They gave Wheatley some nice... Uh, protection that time on that play. From the 48 of Roosevelt, first and 10 for the Mustang, down 6 to nothing. Plenty of time, 98 seconds to go before the break. Two receivers out to the right, one to the left, and now trips to the right. Ramirez on the inside slot to the right. Wheatley, quarterback draw, behind a blocker to the 45, and Wheatley grabbed high and wrestled down at the 41 for a gain of 7. Cooper Walton was one of those who got him up high. Wheatley with his third carry for 20 yards, right up to the line of scrimmage. Second down and three to go. Mustangs had to be disciplined on that line, not commit a penalty. Wheatley hands off to her, take a first down. They'll stop the clock for the movement of the change to the 38-yard line, a gain of three. Now get up to the line of scrimmage. This is where you got to be in great shape as an offense. In fact, like they called timeout. Yeah, well, I, I think... That part of calling the timeout is not even to do with the clock, anything to do with the clock. You don't want to fatigue yourself into a penalty because we've seen plenty of penalties in the first half. And a lot of holding penalties just happen out of sheer laziness. Right. You know, you get tired, you hold, and then you're, you're driven back. It also gives them time. You know, they're in great field position. You don't want to mess it up. They don't want to hurry. They take the timeout, get their play they want. And that's certainly the way to do it. Bank of Colorado is the only bank dedicated to help you to make help you make the most of living here, not just a bank in Colorado, Bank of Colorado, a proud supporter of local sports and academics. That's Bank of Colorado. As the Mustangs at first and ten at the thirty-eight yard line. And they have pride in building their community. That's Western Engineering Consultants. Get your project started by visiting Western dash e dash c dash i 
Mustangs.com. First and 10 for the Mustangs to the 38-yard line. Two timeouts remaining. We've got a minute 12 to go before halftime. Fort Morgan has a shot for the lead. They've either been tied or trailing. It was no score after the first quarter. Roosevelt has two field goals here in the second. Trips to the right. Empty backfield. Wheatley, three-step drop, looks, throws out to his right. Wide open oh. and through the hands of Marquez. Incomplete at the 29-yard line. That was a perfect pass. In fact, Marquez came back to the ball, making it a little bit higher, but he just didn't look it in. And that would have been a first down more than likely. There was nobody within about eh, two or three yards. So he could have turned around and picked up the first down. Yeah, that's the plays you've got to make in a game like this. Second down and 10 to go at the 38-yard line. Yeah, and Marquez knows it. He's got great hands, but not on that play. Ortega, Fajardo, and Marquez to the right. Giannis to the left. Again, empty backfield. Here comes the pressure. Wheatley looks to throw. And that pass is going to be caught by Ortega. Underneath. He leaps over defender to the 15-yard line. Frank Ortega with some nifty moves. What a play. It's a first down for Fort Morgan. And that was a combination of football and track and field for Frank Ortega. They might place the football. Let's see. It's like the 17. Yep, it's a gain of 21. Ortega's first reception from the 17. We have inside of one minute to go. In fact, 48 seconds to go. They're going to have to run a play and call a timeout right after this, unless it's an incomplete pass. From the 17, first down and 10 for the Mustangs. Wheatley, quarterback, keeper to the right, along the right sideline, driven out of bounds. That's a hard hit. I thought I heard a whistle before the snap, but apparently not. And he might have picked up a yard or two. He'll place the football at the 16. It's a gain of one for Wheatley. And again, he went out of bounds. His fourth carry for 21 yards, 36.9 seconds to go. For Morgan down six to nothing. Roosevelt certainly has executed better offensively, but here come the Mustangs. On a drive that started just outside their own 30-yard line. They've got it second down and nine at the 16, and Fort Morgan's an excellent passing team. To the left of the quarterback is Ortega. Wheatley, five yards behind center, has the football play action. A fade to the end zone, left side. Touchdown, Fajardo! Fajardo with a catch on a perfect pass, and he was well defended by Ryan Doucette. But Fajardo with a touchdown catch 16 yards away on the fade up the left sideline. And the game is tied at six. Fajardo's first reception of the game. And here we go with the extra point to be attempted by Brandon Marquez with 31.7 seconds to go. Man, you couldn't throw that any better. No, he and laid it right over the top there and, and Fajardo went up for it. Remember the extra point last year that denied Fort Morgan a three-point lead. Off the low snap. That's a low snap. But that kick looks beautiful from here. It is good. And Fort Morgan has the lead for the first time in the game. It is seven to six. And there goes the cannon. And just like that, Wheatley has 87 yards passing. Here in the first quarter, in the first half, excuse me. Well, he seems to throw better when uh, he has some urgency, whether it's first and not 10 at the one-yard line or you know, they're a little bit behind. That's when he seems to do his best. You know, that's what we've seen out of this team this year. It seems when, they're, like they're, when their back's against the wall is when they perform the best. Well, right. remember, Roosevelt was a second-half team against Meade, but Fort Morgan, as I alluded to earlier, has played much better in the second half in four of their six games than in the first half. Now, this is tricky. You've got to cover this kick. This could change things right now. If you kick it deep and Roosevelt goes the distance, all of a sudden it kind of negates what you just did on a 68-yard drive. Let's all for the and Roosevelt has all their timeouts, so you've got to play tight here. This is Fort Morgan's second kickoff of the game. They kick off, kicked off to begin the game. And this will be a little pooch that lands at the 31, and they fall on the football right there. That is Clayton Robinson, a little flare. I think that was the right play. 
you prevent that big return. Yep. Well, they did that the first time. They they they're not they don't want it to get in the hands of those receivers, those returners yep. back at the five. I don't know how they advanced the football to the 32. He crawled to the 32, but he was down at the 31. 30.7 seconds to go. There's plenty of time. You got a good field goal kicker. He, he was nailing it from 40 some odd yards. So they're going to try and score before halftime. And what would the score be? Nine to seven. Yeah. So you want to prevent that. that you want to prevent that deja vu. And is Fort Morgan going to call a timeout, which yeah. I think Sorry, is a genius timeout because you know that Roosevelt, all right, they're going to do something here to try th to throw Fort Morgan off. You just can't run two or three conventional plays and get into field goal range. They might do something here to throw the Mustangs off so Fort Morgan's going to play some assignment football and not allow some freak play to allow Roosevelt to grab the lead before halftime. So the Mustangs down to one timeout, but they're really not going to use any more. You wouldn't think. Roosevelt will. So one thing that against Roosevelt is they don't have their hometown clock runner. <laughs> I was listening. I was. It wasn't just the game last year with Fort Morgan. I was listening to that game with Meade, and they did the same thing. They didn't start the clock on a couple of plays there just before they went down and kicked that field goal. That's how they got the. That's how they got enough time to go up nine to seven. Well, the clock operator here is pretty sharp. First down and 10 for Roosevelt at their own 32-yard line, trailing 7-6. to six. Just over 30 seconds to go, 30.7 in the second quarter. Saya out of the gun. The running back to his left is Doucette. This will be a give right to Doucette along the right sideline. He's going to get out of bounds. Watch out. Do not tackle him out, out of bounds as he was driven out at the 37. Maybe the 38. Sets out of bounds at the 38-yard Gain line. of six. Second down. Down to 26.4 to go. Had they tackled them in bounds, that could have changed things. But, no, they still got, they still have a shot here. And Wheatley is in the game. They want to put Fort Morgan's best out there in the secondary. Wheatley, Fajardo, Marquez, and Frank Ortega. Second down and four from the 38. Saya, uh, throw out to the left, caught by Kaiser. He's got a block and down. For a first down at the 45 for a gain of seven. Keaton Kaiser with his fourth reception. Pass is completed to number seven, Keaton Kaiser. Gain is good for a Roosevelt first down. And that's now 73 yards through the air. They don't seem to be in like a, any kind of hurry. And the clock's down to 10 seconds. They're just going to let it run out. I am shocked. Ah. Oh, now they call a timeout. Okay. Oh, now they're going to do something crazy here. Watch out. A hook and ladder. They're going to do something. Watch out here. Yeah, they're they're going to do something. If I'm Fort Morgan, you got to send five or six back. They're going to do something here that you're they're not expecting. That's why they called a timeout with 4.3 seconds to go. They're going to try something deep, and then a pitch or something like you said. We are coming up on eight o'clock. Mountain Time. I'm John Beltran with Brian Nickel and Kevin Rohde. This is Morgan County's B106 KPRB. Brush Fort Morgan, a classic football game so far. A much anticipated one versus four matchup. The defending state runner up Roosevelt and 6 0 Fort Morgan on their home field, leading Roosevelt 7 6. On a touchdown pass with a minute 53 to go in the second quarter. Actually, less than that. The field goal came with 153. This touchdown came with, what, 31 seconds to go. The 16-yarder uh, to Fajardo. Last play, unless it's a defensive penalty from the 45. There's a pitch forward to Walton to the 50-yard line. And then he breaks the tackle. He's got one to beat at the 30. Walton is now going to be tackled by Ortega at the 18-yard line. Oh, that was scary. That was a gain of 37. That's going to go as a pass. It was a little... And he had one, if, if he doesn't make that tackle, and I'm talking about Frank Ortega and Marquez got him on the back end, then we are looking at a touchdown. So we've reached halftime. The Mustangs with a 7-6 to six lead. Mustang halftime shows brought to you by B&B Appliance from refrigerators to vacuums and everything in between. They have exactly what you need and service it to. That is B&B Appliance and Repair. Let's look at the numbers here pretty quickly. 
because we have an extended halftime show. All types of offense there for Roosevelt when you're looking at them. The Mustangs, as I mentioned, have 106 yards of total offense. We'll check that. Let's see, 113. 113 for Fort Morgan, 87 from Wheatley, 26 yards on the ground. But Ryan Doucette, nine carries for 67 yards. Saya's got All four for 47. Cooper Walton with nine All yards on the ground, 13 for Clayton Robinson. So you're looking at 136 yards rushing for Roosevelt and 100, 236 yards through the air. 236 yards total for Roosevelt and the Mustangs with only 113. All right, we'll come back with our halftime show and um, we'll be rejoined here by Brian Nickel and Kevin Rohde. We'll take a 30-second break. We have a special feature for you. And then we'll come back just before the second half kickoff. Two field goals by Kelly Parham. Gave Roosevelt a 6 to nothing lead, a 30-yarder and a 32-yarder, both in the second quarter. But then a 16-yard touchdown pass with 31 seconds to go from Wheatley to Fajardo with the extra point. It's Fort Morgan 7, Roosevelt 6, a 30-second break on B106 and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. John Beltran back with Brian Nickel and Kevin Rohde approaching the second half of tonight's game between Roosevelt and Fort Morgan. The Mustangs lead 7-6. to six. Kevin, I think it's safe to say that if the Mustangs play in the second half like they did in the first half, they could still lose the game because they caught several breaks and came up with a big turnover. Yeah, they, I think the turnover is right now the big big play of the game. Uh, I think you went over the stats right before halftime or right at the beginning of halftime. Poor Morgan's being outgained. 236 to 113. So I think if Roosevelt gets a little bit of momentum, it's going to be hard for Fort Morgan to stay in it. But we got some great athletes, good coaches. We always got a chance. Yeah, and Brian, from what we saw from Briggs Wheatley, again, his passes were not spot on in the first half, except that touchdown pass was gorgeous to Braden Fajardo. That was, I mean, that's Montana to Rice right there. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, he was he was on when he needed to be on, but he looked like this last week. His that first half, he was he was just off. It didn't look good at all. And then they came out in that second half, and I don't, I don't know what happens in that locker room. I like to be a fly on the wall sometimes just to see what goes on in there because they come out and they're just like a whole different team. So we'll see if they can continue that here tonight. Uh, they're going to have to if they're going to want to win this thing. But you know, up to seven to seven to six here, and. Um, you know, it's kind of like last year when we went up to up to uh, Roosevelt last year. We didn't think Fort Morgan was going to have a chance in that game. It ended up being a one-point victory for Roosevelt. Here again, you know, Fort Morgan's got to play almost the perfect game. They have it, and they are still got the lead. So, And in that game, Morgan led at halftime 10-7, to and Roosevelt won 17-16. And then we saw two years ago, both of you were here, when Roosevelt had the game one and then uh, a long kickoff return, I think, by Frank Ortega tied the game. And then Jacob Ortega's extra point gave them a 28-27 victory in overtime. So right. the last two games have been decided by one point. We're at a point Let's right now. And Kelly Parham will kick off for Roosevelt to begin the third quarter. With well, the Mustangs holding a 7-6 to six lead. Parham's field goals from 30 and 32 yards away. And back deep to receive are Fajardo and Ortega at about their own 10-yard line. And this ball is booted high and very deep at the 5 along the right sideline to the 10. Ortega to the 15, stutter stepping. There's a flag down, and that's going to draw the Mustangs back as he's down at the 22. 17-yard return, but Fort Morgan's going to have the same field position, Brian, that they did to begin their first drive of the game. Yeah, yeah, they... They've, they've got to stop these penalties that uh, it's going to cost them. And right here, it's going to cost them. Uh, they didn't have great field position to start with, but they're going to be back about the 10-yard line to start this second half. So they're going to have a long field to go. They did go 68 yards on the drive that got them into the end zone. Now they're going to have to go 90, well, about 89 yards. It's at the 11. Marquez is the receiver to the left. Pichardo and Yanez to the right, and Ortega the lone setback. And now on the inside slot to the right is Levi McCoy. 
Let's see if they operate out of the gun with Ortega to the left side of the running back, of the quarterback, I should say. First and 10 at their own 11. Briggs Wheatley has played mistake-free football. And Wheatley's going to roll out to his left. The throw over the middle is going to be oh, broken up. Oh, man, what a pop taken at the 24-yard line. That might be Fajardo, slow to get up. He took a major pop, or is that more? Let's see. Yeah, that's Fajardo out there. Marquez is over here. That's the second time. And I think he just got the wind knocked out of him, but he had that ball, and that was a perfect throw. But, man, what a hit delivered. I'm not sure who delivered that hit for Roosevelt, but it was right on the spot. That That is textbook football if you're a defensive player. Right. Yeah, he was. Uh, he had it for an instant, and then got hit. But that's, you know, that's typical Fort Morgan Roosevelt football. It's a hard hitting, hard hitting game, and tonight's no exception. Well, let's hope that he's okay. If you remember last year's playoff game, Fajardo was hurt in that, I think third or fourth quarter, and then came back and had a huge game. So we'll see if he, uh, I don't know, maybe ribs or. You know what. I hope he doesn't have a concussion. That can rattle you. He didn't get hit around the head. There was but still quite a jolt to his whole system there. He got he took, absorbed a big blow. He'll be out for a while, hopefully not the rest of the game. Yeah, I think he just needed some time to recover, but it is not a head injury. So I think he just needs some water and some rest. Second down and 10 to go for Fort Morgan at their own 11, but that was a perfect throw by Wheatley, unfortunately. The defender was right there as soon as it hit Fajardo's hands and he couldn't squeeze the football. On second down and 10 for the 11. Fajardo a little bit wobbly, but like Kevin said, a jolt to the system. Two receivers split out to the left. Wheatley will take it himself. A big hole to the 15, and Wheatley backs to around the 19-yard line. And Briggs Wheatley did not run slow there. He made sure that any hole that was there, he would explode through. It's a gain of eight. Yeah, third he, down and two, right up to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he was right through that hole. <laughs> On third and two, quick snap. Wheatley fakes to Ortega, runs to the middle, and he's going to be hit at the line of scrimmage. That was a weird start to that play. It's like not everybody moved at the same time. It's a fourth and two. Fort Morgan has to punt. On their first possession, there's no way they're going for it. Fourth no. and two at their own 19. Do they know it's fourth down? Are they going to go for this or just... A hard count. I think. Oh, there was movement by Roosevelt. Yep, oh, no, they're not going to call it. There was movement, but apparently did not get into the neutral zone. <clears throat> yeah, they're not going to punt. They're not going to go for it here. Fourth and two at their own 19. And I think Fort Morgan is... He, I don't think they'll take a timeout. They'll just take a delay of game. Now they will take a timeout. Well, that's a risky timeout. Taken by I Coach know. Ty Davies. Because you're just over a minute into the second half. And you've only got two remaining. Ortega will come into punt. I think that's a good play there. But there was a lineman nearly into the neutral zone for Roosevelt. I thought he was in there. Yeah, so did the coaches. They were all up in arms there with it not being called. That's what they were trying to do. So Tucker Peterson is back deep to receive along with Ryan Doucette. Ortega at his own three-yard line on fourth and two for the 19. Max protect here for Fort Morgan with three players about seven yards in front of Ortega. And that's a gorgeous punt end over and backing up is Peterson. And it's going to bounce at the 40-yard line and down by the Mustangs and David Keller at the 36 maybe, a punt of 45 yards. Well, that changed field position a little bit. It could have been a lot worse. Oh, yeah. Now I got to play defense again. It would have been nice for Fort Morgan to pick up a couple of first downs. But they've been used to this tonight. Having to play plenty of defense. Not only to stay in the game, but now have the lead. Right, and it's been interesting to see how Roosevelt adjusted half offensively because Fort Morgan did kind of put a squash on them to a some degree. First and 10 for Roosevelt at their own 36-yard line. Out of the gun, high snap pass out is caught on the left flat. And a seam to the outside along the 45 is Kaiser. He's got a first down. Right at the 45, it looks like. The 46, I should say. A gain of 10. That's a simple simple pass in the flat. That's an easy play. 110 yards through the air now for Brock Saya. 
Yeah, we'll see what they can, <clears throat> how much they've changed their offense here a little bit for different plays that they're going to be calling here in the second half. So. Well, the drive before halftime, the one that they stopped here with Cooper Walton's play, but the other one went 70 yards for a field goal. Saya fakes, runs to his left, and he's tackled after a gain of about two. A little bit of an odd play there. McCoy around the football. And the gain is maybe just a yard. I don't know what he tried to do there. I think he tried to throw a pass on the run. But instead, he just had to run the ball. And Saya and the Rough Riders face a second and nine at their own 47-yard line. Under 10 minutes to go in the third quarter. Fort Morgan 7, Roosevelt 6. The Mustangs ranked fourth in 3A at 6-0. Roosevelt, the defending state runner-up at 7-0, ranked number one. Trips to the right from the 47. One receiver to the left. This will be a counter to Cooper Walton. A seam to the inside across the 50, and he's carrying a defender to the 48-yard line. The gain is five, third and four on that misdirection to Cooper Walton. And that was his... Fourth carry of the game for 14 yards. I think Fort Morgan defended that pretty well. They haven't seen that play all day. A lot of times you get that misdirection and it opens it up pretty wide, but nice job on the defense that time. Third and four for the Mustang 48-yard line. Four yards behind center. There's the pass out in the right. Caught by Peterson trying to get around Marquez. He cannot. It's going to be a loss in Roosevelt territory. Back to the 47, a loss of five. On the pass to Walton, his second right reception. And that does go Marquez. as a pass, and nice play by Marquez. Fourth down, and nine yards to go, and Roosevelt will have to punt. That's great defense by the Mustangs. Yeah, nice job there. They fought off their defenders out here and got in there for that tackle. That was a good job by the defensive backs. D.J. Bradbury to punt at his own 33-yard line. Perfect snap, no rush. That's a spiraling punt. Wheatley's going to back up. He'll, he'll drop the ball. Wheatley's going to fall on it. And I think Wheatley fell on it at the 13. I think Wheatley fell on it at the 13, but it hit his right hand. Oh, they're going to say, yeah, Fort Morgan's got the ball. Oh, see, that's the thing. You send Briggs Wheatley back there. He's not used to returning from that position. Right. When do you send Briggs back there? Yeah, I don't understand that. Well, you know, they did it because Fajardo, who's now back into the game. Fajardo had two punt returns against Niwa for touchdowns two weeks ago. Right. But if you're going to send him into the game now, well, I guess people running at full speed, they wanted to protect Fajardo, so I get that. But you certainly want to protect your quarterback. We've got 8.22 to go third quarter. Fort Morgan leads Roosevelt 7-6. to six. First and 10 for the Mustangs at their own 18-yard line. 13. Check that, 13-yard line. Trips to the right. Wheatley will keep it himself straight ahead to the 15, now maybe to the 16. Off right tackle. He maneuvered his way for a gain of three from the 13 to the 16. They're having to work hard even for a three-yard gain at this point. Second down. They seem to have abandoned the pass after that one throw to Fajardo. Seven carries for 32 yards for Briggs Wheatley. Second down and seven to go at their own 16-yard line. The Mustangs just dodged the bullet. The only turnover of the game was an interception by Fernando Marquez in the opening half. Two receivers out to the right, one to the left. And Wheatley to throw, looking deep up the right side. Fajardo's out there incomplete. He was by himself at the 35. Air mailed a little bit too much. If you put more air under it, that's going to be a completion, and there was only one defender out there. Yeah, he was out there by himself. Riggs just a little off. Oh, man. And the timing gets messed up a little bit with Fajardo maybe a little bit lame and not going quite as far yep. fast as he was. Yep. He's yep. coming he, back out. He's pulling up. Gimpy. Not sure if it was a hamstring. Third down. He's out of the game now. Third down and seven for the 16. Let's see if Roosevelt comes with pressure. Mosqueda and Marquez to the left. Yanez and Ortega to the right. <laughs> Empty backfield. Awaiting the snap is Briggs Wheatley. 
Back to throw. Looks to his right. Throws it out to Ortega. It is caught at the 41-yard line. And he's to the 44. The throw is a little bit behind him. It's a first down. And are they going to mark the football back at the 41? Was his knee down? It's a gain of 25. Because he slid all the way to the 44. But that's his second reception for 46 yards. Frank Ortega doesn't drop a ball. No. He's got tremendous hands. And if it's anywhere near him, he'll adjust and pick it up. Which is what he did there. That throw was a little bit behind him. First and 10 from their 41-yard line. Wheatley play action. Now he's going to roll to his left and take off with the football. The 45, and Wheatley is down at the 50. Briggs Wheatley <laughs> running with reckless <laughs> abandon tonight. Picks up nine yards before Doucette makes the hit. And see, Wheatley's putting himself in a position where you're not sure defensively, is he going to take off with the football? Is he going to option? Is he going to throw? Yeah, because he can sometimes do any he of rolls. It. Yeah, you just gotta you just gotta play smart though, and don't take that big hit and get yourself hurt. You and I are thinking the same thing, because he, <laughs> we got to keep him healthy, right? Yep. Second down and one from midfield. Drive started at the 13. Play action, and Wheatley's trying to avoid getting sacked. He'll run to his right. Wheatley's gonna take a sack at the 45. Nearly a face mask. But Wheatley wiggled his way out of trouble. It could have been maybe a six or seven yard loss, but it's a loss of five. Back on the play by number 22. Third down and six to go. Cooper Walton was in that backfield. McCoy is out, Ortega's back in. He looked like he was gonna go out here to the flat or just hit the short pass and it was covered. Under six minutes to go in the third. Fort Morgan holding onto a one point lead. On third down and six to go from their own 45-yard line. Two receivers again split out to the left. Now it's trips to the left as Ortega is the inside receiver. One to the right. Wheatley with a five-step drop looking to throw. Pressure coming backside. He'll run to his right. He's got one to beat at the 50. First down to the 40. Wheatley now to the 30. Gets a block to the 20. There's oh, a no. flag down to the 10. Five. It's a touchdown. It's going to come back. Oh, I don't think that was an illegal block. I think Fort Morgan got, oh, they got the short end of that stick. That would have been a 55-yard touchdown run. There's two flags down, so that might be separate penalties, but two officials saw the same thing. But I think Fort Morgan got a, a bogus call there. Yeah, I thought he, I thought that was a good, uh, a good block. Yeah, that's kind of a tough call to make out there in the open field, and and the, the sad thing is the Fort Morgan player could have just stood there and not even stepped into him and had the same effect, but. We'll see, they're talking it over, so we'll see what they. No, they're gonna call a penalty, but I, I think he still picked up a first down. Oh, they call that a. Uh... Well, that still might be a first down if they're gonna mark it off for the 33. For a crack, I guess you can't block coming it, back downfield. Brian, it's a gain of 22 for Wheatley. That's gonna, it should be a first down. Yeah, that's going to be a first down yep. at the 48-yard line. Well, that's the only advantage of a penalty taking place down the field. Wow. But it was a crackback block. I'm not sure. Who, but it was one Mustang there. Yep. And I don't think it was a crackback block, but we, we all three of us, I think, kind of questioned it when the flag was thrown. And the Mustang coaches went crazy. Yeah. First and 10 at the 48-yard line. 5:20, six to go, third quarter. Fort Morgan leads Roosevelt 7-6 on a 16-yard touchdown pass late in the second quarter from Wheatley to Brayden Fajardo. Wheatley from the gun. Will keep it himself off the fake, and he backs to the 47. Then he's driven back. It's a gain of one. Too many rough riders in there to make the hit, including Cooper Walton. I'm thinking they've got to hand off to Frankie one of these times, and no one's going to be thinking that, and he's going to break it because they're all keen on Briggs. Well, Ortega's got four carries in the game for five yards. Second down and nine for the 47. Can Fort Morgan take the lead going into the fourth quarter? Can they retain the lead going into the fourth quarter? Under five minutes to go. On second down and nine. Trips to the left, one receiver to the right in Roosevelt territory. Quarterback draw for Wheatley, runs to his right. He's driven back after a gain of a yard to the 46. And Briggs Wheatley is going to need a, a hot tub after this game. About three Rough Riders there. It's gang tackling. 
including Anthony Munoz, a senior. Third down and eight yards to go. And even if Fort Morgan doesn't pick up a first down or points here, Roosevelt is not going to have good field position. And we're going to be under four minutes when this play commences in the third. On third down and eight from the 46, the Mustang offense looking over towards the sideline for play instructions. Well, you've got split backs there. Wheatley, play action, plenty of protection. Over the middle, the pass is tipped, oh. intercepted. Most tended from Mosquito along the left side to the 45 and driven back there. It was picked off by Jaden Botterill. Intended for Mosqueda, the throw was high, and the Mustangs have committed their first turnover of the game, only the second interception thrown this year by Briggs Wheatley. Roosevelt has it in their own territory, but they have much better field position than had Fort Morgan had to punt. Now we'll see how Fort Morgan reacts on defense. They're going to have to make a stand here and, and stay in the, keep their offense in the game. Wheatley is only 6 out of 16 in the game for 112 yards. And the INT, first and 10 for Roosevelt. They've got the ball at their own 47-yard line. Saya with a three-step drop, pumps. Deep up the left side, wide open. That could be a touchdown. It's incomplete. He overthrew Kaiser at the 19-yard line. Jose Mosqueda bit on the fake. Oh, Jose has to know better than that. Man, he bit on the fake bad. And if that pass is thrown or underthrown more than it was, that would have been an easy touchdown. That would have gone 53 yards. Yeah, that uh, he just overthrew him, but you gotta, you gotta, yeah, you stay can't behind them you, or stay in front of them. You can't let them get behind you. Yeah, you can't bite on that fake. No way. And there is the give, and still driving to the 50-yard line. That's that Saya. Check yep. that. That's Saya himself to the 49. He took it himself. A gain of four. Third down and six to go for Saya. Off that play, that was his sixth carry of the game for 52 yards. It's a long six to go as the ball is just shy of the 49-yard line of Fort Morgan. 3.06 to go in the third. Fort Morgan leads Roosevelt 7-6. to six. This could be four down territory on third down and six. Saya back to throw, middle of the pocket. Slant nearly intercepted. Marquez almost had it at the 44. He was the inside receiver instead of Keaton Kaiser. I'm not sure what happened there, but Saya misread that and almost threw his second pick to Marquez. Yeah, the first uh, wide receiver went across the middle and was wide open because we had a linebacker that blitzed and there was no one there and he misread, misread the play and went to a secondary receiver and almost got that picked off. Well, you do Fort Morgan a favor when you pass the ball. I know they had that one drive they passed extremely well. Perfect snap and Bradbury, a high, very short kick along the sideline, and that's out of bounds. That's a short kick, and not much there to the 27, maybe a 22-yard punt. Yeah. Well, not yeah. bad for Fort yeah. Morgan. Yeah, that's a lot better than we could have expected. They've dodged another bullet. They did. I mean, their last drive was pretty good. They started at the 13. Had a 55-yard touchdown run by Wheatley, called back because of a crackback block that offended Brian Nickel to his core. <laughs> but I was right there with you, by the way. Yeah, that, that, yeah, well, we play on, I guess. So. Well, you have to. There's no other choice. First and 10 at the 28-yard line. Well, that's just another mistake that Fort Morgan has to overcome, even though we certainly didn't think it was a mistake by Fort Morgan. First and 10 at the 28-yard line. Mosqueda's in motion to the right, and this will be Wheatley faking a Mosqueda. He's got the ball breaking out of a tackle across the 35 to the 37. Wheatley with a gain of nine. This guy's made of rubber. I mean, he's just taking shot after shot and not being phased by it. And Briggs Wheatley unofficially, looks like he's about to uh, up to 74 yards on 12 carries. And all Fort Morgan has to do is hold on to the ball. They're going to take the lead going into the fourth quarter. Because we're down to 2.12 to go. They should pick up a first down here. But you know that Roosevelt run defense has been tough against Ortega. That's why Wheatley's had to do the damage. 
on second down and one. Handoff Ortega up the middle. He's got enough for a first down right at the stick. And that's exactly what Kevin Rohde was saying earlier. At some point, they're going to give it to Ortega. Now, he didn't break it, but on second and one, you can afford to do that. Uh, and he got a lousy spot. He did, but that should be a first down. He got a terrible spot. Officials I got to tell you, he might not pick up a first down from this vantage point. Now, if he doesn't, uh, I think he does. Yeah. I think he does. It's a, We're going to give him a gain of one, but if he's short, it's by a, right. and a the, couple of inches. The Fort Morgan volunteer firemen have been doing the chains for the Fort Morgan games for a long time. are out there helping out. It's first down. Well, the chains move, and the clock will rerun as soon as the chains are reset at their own 38-yard line. Like a good neighbor, Greg Mullen and his team are there to make the insurance world easy for you. 842-4555. Greg Mullen at State Farm Insurance. And fill up your cooler, gas up your car, stubs, gas, and oil. And, of course, mobile banking on the go makes banking easier for you when you're on the go at Equitable, Equitable easy for me to say, Equitable Savings and Loan. On first and 10 for the Mustangs at their own 38-yard line. Fajardo's in motion to the left. Has the handoff for the end around. Gets a nice block. Swings it to the outside, but uh, maybe half a yard. Brandon you're running Girardo east and west here. like that. You need like two or three blocks. And he got just beyond the line of scrimmage before Robinson made the first hit. Second down and 10 to go for the Mustangs. And the Rough Riders are not going to dominate football like they have through the first seven games if they don't have speed to get to the outside and shut down that play. Without a doubt, under one minute to go in the third. It was scoreless after one. We might have a scoreless third quarter, which makes for an exciting fourth. Field goals of 30 and 32 yards by Kelly Parham in the second quarter gave Roosevelt a 6-0 lead. Then with 31 seconds to go, a 16-yard touchdown pass from Wheatley to Fajardo. Trips to the right. Second down and 10 for the 38. Quick drop for Wheatley. Looks to his right. Pressure coming. Throws over the middle. Complete! That is caught by Chase Redding, I believe. Yeah, to the 45. That's a nice reception. Nice pattern. It's a gain of seven. Third down. And the amount of time Briggs had to throw that one was really nice. He just sat back there and was comfortable and went yeah, but, through his progression. Yeah, the pocket did collapse after a while, and it had to. Third down and three. They're not going to run another play. No, they don't need to run a, another play. As we will head to the fourth quarter after the break, Fort Morgan leading the number one ranked Roosevelt Rough Riders in Fort Morgan by a score of seven to six. And that is the end of the third quarter. As Frank Ortega takes off that helmet, as the Mustangs get ready for a big fourth quarter, Fort Morgan seven, Roosevelt six. On B106 and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. John Beltran back with Brian Nickel and Kevin Rohde. We go to the fourth quarter. The Mustangs hold a 7-6 to six lead. It is third down and three for their own 45-yard line. Fort Morgan looking for a first down. They picked up a couple in that third quarter. Wheatley with a three-step drop. Throws out to his right. Complete at the 50-yard line. And there's a flag down to the 46. Somebody might have moved for the Mustangs a little bit too early. Brian, what did you see? Yeah, somebody went down in the set position and right about the time the ball was snapped, so they right. weren't set. And because it was a, t a tight end, it's not a false start. It's just illegal shift. Yep, officially illegal motion against Fort Morgan. So now the third and three goes to a third and eight at the 40-yard line on their own side of the field. Still, third down. Well, Fort Morgan had to play perfect football. They're not playing perfect football, not even close. They've made some great plays in this game, especially defensively. But right now, they've got to come up with a first down. On third down, and eight to go at their own 40-yard line. Two receivers split out to the left side. The lone setback is Frank Ortega. Now, he's a receiver to the left. On third down, Wheatley to throw, pressure coming deep up the left side. The pass is going to be caught. It's caught by Ortega backing up inside the 40 to the 37. Holy Mahungas, a gain of 23 and a Mustang first down. Wow. I mean, what can you say about that combination of Wheatley and Ortega? 
They'll be sorely missed next year. I'll say that much. Well, you know, let's enjoy this year. I mean, there were you know nobody has a lifetime contract. And that was but you're right. Were, you're right about that. Yeah, and that was right into a crowd too. But Ortega came down with it. It was very well defended. First and ten for Fort Morgan at the 37 yard line of Roosevelt, along that left hash mark. And Wheatley takes it himself. He's going to take a loss running to his right. He didn't have anything there. He just tried to run off Start right tackle, right and he was buried at the 39. And Cooper Walton got a big hit on Wheatley. Second down, and 12 to go at the 39-yard line. Wheatley now has 72 yards, even after the loss on 13 carries. Fajardo and Marquez to the right, Giannis to the left. Second down and 12 at the 39-yard line of Roosevelt. Perfect snap, Wheatley to throw, pumps. He's going to heave it deep up the right side. Marquez is out there, and he caught it. I think he had a foot in bounds. No, they're going to say he was out of bounds. Wow, okay, I got to check that. Let's see. I got that play. I shot that play. Did he have... Man, I thought he had a foot in bounds. Uh, tough to tell from the angle I shot it. Tough to tell. Nonetheless, it's an incomplete pass. Third down and 12 to go for the Mustangs at the Roosevelt 39-yard line. Boy, that, that was pretty close, though. That certainly was not an easy call for the official. Wheatley, play action. A screen to the right, incomplete. Cooper Walton buries Wheatley into the ground. That did not allow Wheatley to get a strong enough throw to Ortega. And it's fourth down. Fort Morgan has to punt. Oh, man. And Ortega had running room. Yeah, he just... That, that kid was unblocked. That was just... Well, Wheatley... Yeah, yeah, now Ortega yeah. wants to go for it, but you're at the 39. You're at the 39-yard line, and you have not allowed a touchdown to the number one ranked team. Eventually, you think they're going to get on the board. Now, if you're Frank Ortega... I would kick this towards the sideline. Yeah. No return here. Because even a bad kick, you're going to put them inside their own 20-yard line. He's standing at the 46 of Fort Morgan with a perfect snap. Heavy rush. He gets it off. And was he roughed up? No. Nope. Boy, he got roughed up and no whistle. And it's fair caught at about the 17 by Peterson. How was that call not made? No, I don't know. I mean, that's crazy. Boy, all the coaches are out there. Ty Davies is drawing the coaches back. Boy, he wants he wants an explanation here. Ortega got roughed up and no whistle. And there was not a digit on the football by a Roosevelt defender. And Ty Davies is unhappy, but you don't want a penalty here like he had against Niwad two weeks ago. It's at the 18-yard line. He's got to be careful. He's got to be careful. He's way on that field. you got to... And you don't want to cost your team a game. At least 15 yards. 9.56 to go. Fort Morgan leads 7-6. to six. Roosevelt at their own 18-yard line. Saya is under center. On first down, handoff. Up the middle. Stutter stepping to his left. That is set. He's getting loose. And he's tackled from behind by Briggs Wheatley at about the 27. It's a gain of about 9. Let's see if they backtrack the football a little bit to the 26. Gain of 9 there. It was at the 17. Doucette didn't do anything in the third quarter. In fact, that's his first carry of the second half. He's got 10 carries for 76 yards. Second down and one to go for Roosevelt at their own 26-yard line. The backs in an eye, Saya under center. I think they're going to play some smash mouth football here to try yeah. to get into the end zone. They are 74 yards oh, away. That, there was yeah. movement by the left guard. That was definite movement there by Austin Schultz. And that'll draw them back. Another penalty against Roosevelt. Second and one becomes second and six. I would have never dreamed, gentlemen, that Fort Morgan could win a low-scoring game like this against Roosevelt. Well, not from either of their records. That's for sure. Well, I mean, the fact that Fort Morgan's explosive offensively, you knew that they would be held down a, a bit by the Roosevelt defense. But 
Roosevelt's offense to get two yeah. field goals. They did not score in the first quarter. They did not score in the third quarter. Under nine minutes to go in the game. Second down and six to go at their own 21. Now out of the gun. Kaiser's in motion to the right. High snap to throw. Here comes the pressure off his back foot. The pass is complete to Peterson at the 23. He's got the sideline. A flag is down. That's going to come back. That's going to be against Roosevelt. I think a block in the back as he's out of bounds at the 37. That will nullify a 16-yard gain, but that's definitely against the Rough Riders. Yeah. I saw a block in the back. Let's see if that's going to be the case or holding. Oh, they're going to wave off the penalty. Oh, you're kidding me. Oh, my gosh. They didn't wave. Oh, 16-yard gain to Peterson. That's ridiculous. Man, maybe it wasn't a penalty, but come on. He threw the flag for a reason. That's what I'm saying. I mean, what are you doing? First and 10. Well, the thing, if Fort Morgan does not hold on to the lead, they're not going to drop in the rankings. They shouldn't. No. And I know that somebody on the sideline wants the clock to run. The clock's not going to run. The ball was out of bounds. First and 10 at the 37-yard line. There's the handoff and a loss. What a play made in the backfield off the handoff. To Xavier Ramirez, and that was Timothy Paxton. A loss of two. And for Ramirez, Ramirez has got over 400 yards this year. That's his first carry for a minus two, second down and 12. And the clock is not a factor yet, but there's 8.14 to go. Fort Morgan has two timeouts remaining, and Roosevelt with all three. Two receivers split out to the left and right. Saya looks to throw to his right. The pass is caught underneath by Peterson. Tries to break out of a tackle. He's still on his feet. Got to get him down to the ground. Not before he gets to the 46-yard line. Well, that's too easy there. Peterson with a gain of 11 off the reception. They should have had him for much shorter than that. He's a little bit of a horse. He can carry a couple guys with him. Third down and one. That changes the whole sequence right here. Wow, that's too bad. Third and one. Should be an easy first down. Saya up the middle. He's got it. Dives to the 49 for a gain of three. For Brock Saya. Jesse Campa made the tackle. Yeah, you just get the feeling Roosevelt's going to score here. I mean, to hold down this offense for as long as they have. And there's, I, a, there's only one we got to get a turnover here. Yeah, and I think I think what they're doing, they could, if they, as far as they're concerned, they'd run it down to there's 7:06 left in this game, and they'd run it clear down to the end of the clock. They they yeah they want to run it here from the 49. Saya is going to throw it out to his right. It's caught underneath, but nothing. No gain, maybe a loss, and there's a late flag. There's two late flags. Oh, no, this is going to be maybe a late hit against Fort Morgan. Not sure who caught that pass along the far side, but that might be a personal foul against Fort Morgan. Yeah, Levi McCoy was scrapping with one of their players. Well, hopefully it's a double foul, because if it's not a double foul, that's going to go against Fort Morgan. Personal foul, Fort Morgan. And, you, I mean, you just can't have penalties like that. I mean, I smell a Roosevelt touchdown coming up here anytime yeah. soon. You commit a penalty like that after the play. Balls at the 36 of the drive. Brian started at the 18. Wow. They've traveled 46 yards. And the clock is not a problem right now. We have 6.43 to go in the game. Fort Morgan leads 7-6. to six. First and 10 at the 36-yard line along the right hash mark. Ramirez is the lone setback. Saya, quick drop. Might set it up deep up the right side. Receiver wide open. And that is going to be broken up or caught. Caught out of bounds. Out of bounds to Peterson at the one. Ortega was out there. Second down. One for the home run. And it's out of bounds. And that was close. Yeah, they've taken a couple shots deep. And they've had their shots and had receivers open. Just haven't been able to deliver the ball tonight. But again, if they pick up seven or eight yards here, that makes a third down play that much easier. Fort Morgan has to come up with three critical plays right now on defense. Second down and 10 for the 36, and I doubt they'd pass right now. You've got Doucette in that backfield. Off to the right of the quarterback, Saya. Trips to the left. 
On second down and 10, they are going to pass back. The throw pressure coming. The screen out to the right is caught underneath by Doucette, and he's tackled from behind across the 35 to the 32. Didn't get much, though. Yeah, that was the best job we've done defending that screen yet today. Gain of four. It was a tackle made from behind. First reception, four down territory, third and six from the 32, under six minutes to go in the game, and Fort Morgan holding on to a 7-6 to six lead. On third down, now they'll realign. This might be a direct snap to Doucette. Sia is a receiver out to the left. Man in motion to the left, and there's a flag down. There's several flags down. I don't know why Doucette is still running the ball. There's no reason to run. There were flags down flags thrown before the deal. play. There was too much movement, and Lane Wassinger is not happy. That's against Roosevelt. You know the one thing that we noticed last year in the playoffs? When Roosevelt, no, that's a uh, false start. False start on the Roosevelt offense. ran two or three Five plays that were very puzzling to me, <laughs> including a, a catch and a lateral that ended up being a fumble. They got a little bit too cute for themselves, if you remember right. that. Right. Instead of playing straight up football and there, yeah. th there are too many moving parts and they committed the violation. Yeah, just play straight up football and do what you do best. Now, all of a sudden, it's third down and 11 at the Mustang 37-yard line, and the clock does continue to run. Inside of five and a half minutes to go in the game. What a game tonight from Legion Field. One of the games of the week. The last two meetings have been decided by one point. Fort Morgan leads by a point. Third and 11 from the 37. Saya with a five-step drop. Pressure, throw over the middle, is caught. Well short of a first down to about the 33. That is Brayden Fajardo with a tackle. And it was Herrera, the tight end, with a catch. I think that was David Keller that got in on Saya there just after he, just as he released it. I'm thinking you got a punt here. Even though they're deep there at the 33. Timeout, Roosevelt. Give Roosevelt. football there. That would be pretty choice prime territory. Yeah, this lead. no, I don't think you punt. Not not here. Not with a fourth down and seven at the thirty-three. But I don't I don't know if you send in the field goal team. That's gonna be too long of a field oh, yeah. goal. Yeah, that'd be too long for it here. But I think you definitely go for it. You're at five oh one to go in the game. I mean if you don't pick it up, and the reason the reason to me you go for it here, it's so hard to get points. Right. It is so difficult to get points that when you have the opportunity I mean Right. But if you go for it here and you don't make it and you hold Fort Morgan to you know three and out, you're going to get the ball back on the 30-20 because they're going to punt. That's a great point. If you punt it and you hold them three, you're going to get the ball right back here. Yeah, no, it's a great – either way. But if you're ranked number one, you go for it in this situation, and that's what Roosevelt's going to do. Here is the biggest play of the game. Fourth down and seven for the Mustang 33-yard line. Under – Center is Saya. Saya is going to roll back, throw a screen to the left. It's caught by Doucette at the 30, along the sideline to the 20. Doucette to the 10. It's first down and goal. Oh, man, that was a big play set up perfectly for Roosevelt. And let's see where that football is being placed. Somebody's hurt. Helped out of bounds near the five-yard line. Now we'll see who that is. But it's a first and goal along the sideline. That's why you go for it there. It's a gain of 28. But there is a, an injured player for the Mustangs. Well, that's what a number one team does. Yeah, you're right. Good for another Roosevelt. First down. Okay, let's see who that is that gets up. Fernando. Yeah, Marquez. Oh, boy. You don't want him hurt, but looks like he's okay. First and goal at the five. Fort Morgan's going to have to score a touchdown <clears throat> here to... To win the game. Well, first of all, Roosevelt, if they score, they'll go for two. Undoubtedly there. They will go for two. But a perfect screen to the left, and nobody was out there for the Mustangs. So the ball at the five-yard line. Clock is stopped with 4.52 to go in the game. This is Roosevelt's chance here. They've had other chances. Three in the backfield. Saya on the counter to do set to the two, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, five yards out for Ryan Doucette. Number three, 
on his 11th carry of the game, and Roosevelt now leads 12 to 7. With 4.48 to go from Fort Morgan. Yep. And again, you just felt that was going to happen, an 82-yard drive. A huge penalty against Fort Morgan, a big fourth and seven conversion. And now, again, they will go for two to make this a seven-point game. And now, where's oh, the was flag? that a flag? Yep, sideline. Well, but what does that do? No, it moves it back five yards. It oh, will it do warning. that? It's just a Roosevelt. Yeah, then no. why? I mean, it's just a warning. Yeah, but we okay. saw one earlier this year that it was a penalty. Yeah. All right, at the two-yard line. Three in the backfield. Let's see if this goes to Walton. Saya, nope, it's going to roll out to his right. Pressure coming, oh. throws up his back foot wide open. Caught by Peterson in the back of the end zone for the two-point conversion. Two-point conversion is good. 14-7. to Roosevelt in the lead with under five minutes to go in the game, and Fort Morgan will have one opportunity to get into the end zone. You know, if Fort Morgan does come out on the short end of this, they have played with the number one team in the state. Yeah. And this is the game you can afford to lose. But if you meet them again, it'll be in the playoffs. And that's the one you're going to have to win. You know, you can afford to get beat. It's not going to drop them in the RPI because you're playing the number one team. It'd be great to beat them, no doubt. Well, but you're still going to you're going to be in the playoffs. Hopefully you can be on the opposite side that they are when it comes up but they've still got four minutes and 48 seconds i've seen fort morgan plays their best ball when they got their backs to the wall without a doubt brian going into this game and kevin i thought that fort morgan i was i wasn't sure if fort morgan was a state title contender i'm convinced they're now a state title contender based on this performance tonight yeah. and they have a shot still to pull this off to kick it off is kelly parham he's one of the differences in the game with Two field goals in the second quarter. 14 to seven Roosevelt. This is their second lead of the game. Line drive headed towards the sideline. Ortega's got it at the eight. Along the right sideline to the 15. Stutter steps, leaps over defender at the 20. Actually his own man. And down at the 23. On the, return. the Mustangs are about 77 yards away from making this a one point game and then if they can get into the end zone decision time as to whether they would kick the extra point or go for two. They did win an overtime game here in 2019, 28-27. After Roosevelt scored, missed an extra point. Fort Morgan scored and Jacob Ortega kicked it through. Well, it'll be at the 23 once again. First and 10 for the Mustangs. As Brian mentioned, plenty of time remaining. In 4.48 going into that kickoff. 4.41 now, seven seconds off the kickoff. Trips to the left. Briggs Whaley more than likely will throw in this play. Nope, he'll take off with a football run to his right along the sideline to the 25, and he's driven out. Maybe at the 26. Briggs Whaley on the carry. It was made over there by the linebacker, Jaden Casanueva. Down Second down and seven yards, yards to go. Briggs Wheatley has now picked up 75 yards on 14 carries. Yeah, you don't want to get into a third and long. And you know the one fear I have here is a penalty. You don't want a penalty either. Yeah, I don't know what they're checking on now here. Fort Morgan was one play away from retaining a 7-6 to six lead, but a 28-yard screen pass. From Saya to Doucette, brought the ball to the five, and then Doucette scored on the next play. On second down, and seven yards to go for the Mustangs at their own 26-yard line. Roosevelt 14, Fort Morgan 7. Ortega to the left of the running back. Play action, Wheatley to throw. Slant is caught by Marquez. He's popped at the 36. First down for the Mustangs. And do we have a flag down? Flag at the 20. Is that a holder or a roughing the passer? Roughing the passer against Roosevelt. So it's a gain of 10 and give them 15 more. Well, Wheatley's been roughed up before. And that time he got roughed up big time. That should put it at the 49 yard line of Roosevelt, which, oh, yeah, look at the 48. How about that? That's huge. 
First and 10. Plenty of time with two timeouts. 4.29 to go and the clock stopped because of the penalty. Four receivers out to the left and Marquez to the right. First and 10 at the 48 yard line of Roosevelt. Mustangs coming back just like that. They were at the 23 just seconds ago. Wheatley throws out to his left That's and it's dropped and watch out. They're going to call it an incomplete pass. It was almost a lateral. If that's a lateral, that it could have gone the other way for six. Yeah. The official was right there looking down the line, watching that ball come upfield. Not by far, but. No, yeah. not by not much by at much. all. They wanted to isolate Ortega. Second down and 10. That's a long Second throw. The you know, that was a play you thought they were going to work towards earlier on when, right. when Briggs ran it. But that's, yeah, that's a long throw out there. Very long throw. And as quick as these defenders are, if he had caught it, he wouldn't have got very far anyway. At the 48-yard line, second down, 10 yards to go for the Mustangs in Roosevelt territory. Trips to the left, two to the right. Empty backfield, Wheatley to throw, plenty of protection. Throws out to his right. Oh. It's overthrown, nearly intercepted by Peterson at the 40-yard line. Marquez went high for the ball, but that was clearly airmailed. Third down and 10. And for Wheatley tonight, 13 incompletions and one pick. And he's thrown 23 passes, so the percentage is low. He's thrown for well over 100 yards, but man, now you need something special. At least pick up five or six yards to make it fourth and short. Because now you're at third down and 10 at the 48. 3.59 to go from Fort Morgan, and the play clock is running down. Out of the pistol formation, Wheatley looks to his left, throws. Caught by Fajardo at the 48. Fajardo to the 41, and he's tackled short of a first down. But it's a gain of seven, and even that throw is a little bit high. Yeah. A little off, but it's a very doable fourth down, though. Well, now, oh, did he go down with a cramp? That might be Fajardo going down again. Yeah, might have gone down with a cramp. Because he just, he just dropped to the ground. He's trying to get that left leg stretched out. Yeah. Well, let's check out our our game time temp was in the mid 60s. I don't think it's dropped that much. It probably, I'm guessing, low 50s. It's 50 yeah. degrees right now and in flag, Fort Morgan. And the flag is still. You know, there's there's no breeze. It's just a perfect night for football. Yeah, perfect night for a lot of things. Now, fourth down and three to go at the 41. That's a uh, officials timeout. Engineering and Consulting Services for all of your projects. Western Engineering Consultants. Strong commitment to their clients. Each sets them apart. Get your project started the right way. Western Engineering Consultants. Well, this is it. This might actually be the game. Or Morgan does have two timeouts remaining. But it's fourth down and three at the Roosevelt 41. You can't start the clock. There's a guy out there on the field walking off. Sorry, you go. fans, you're not watching with us, but well, that, Fajardo yeah. is on the hash marks. He still has got 33 yards to go, or 16 yards to get off the field, and the official waved the flag or waved the clock yeah. to start. Yeah, you can't do that. I mean, the clock is supposed to restart, but once the player clears the field, which he's done now. Fourth and three at the 41-yard line. Waitley. Five yards behind center. Back to throw. Looks. Passes. Caught. Now drop. Broken up. It was broken up. Marquez had it at the 38. But he couldn't complete the catch. It was broken up by Clayton Robinson. And Roosevelt has the football. Pass was a little high. but And Marquez did everything he could to bring it in. But they are making hits right at the point of contact. Right at the... As soon as the ball hits a receiver, that's when... Roosevelt makes the play. Well, at this point, they're probably just going to run the ball and try to run the clock all the way down. Mustangs have two timeouts remaining. That's why that first timeout to begin the second half was huge. I, yep. Gosh, you don't want to take a timeout like fourth and two at your own 19, and they took a timeout. Should have just taken a penalty. The penalty would have been... 
a lot uh, less of a penalty. First and 10 at the 41. Baxton and I under center. Hand off Walton to his right at the 45. Driven back for a gain of four. Now Fort Morgan calls a timeout immediately. Making it second down and six. All right, this is going to be tough. You know they're going to run that bulldog right there. Or that rough rider who runs like a bulldog. Yeah. The one thing, if Fort Morgan loses, I want this to be 14 to 7. My gosh, I don't want this to be 21 to 7. Somebody looks up at the score, Roosevelt. No, 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 no. Yeah. Because I hate that. If you weren't at the game, you have no idea how it happened. You don't realize that Fort Morgan was one play away from winning 7 to 6. Yeah. You know, they go 20, if they break off a big play, it's just going to be too bad. So hopefully, at the very worst, it stays at 14 to 7 and Roosevelt wins by that margin. Nothing. Hopefully something much better than that, but nothing worse than that. You know they're going to be grabbing at that ball. They're going to try and stand him up. Well, and when that happens, you can break one. Yeah. Because you're not tackling properly. But that's the chance you have to take. Second down and six to go at the 45-yard line. Roosevelt on their own side of the field. Ramirez is now in the backfield. He's the deep back along with Clayton Robinson in an eye. Brock Saya is under center this time from the 45. And they're coming on a blitz, the handoff, and breaking a tackle. There's Ramirez. He spins first down, still on his feet. He's to the 45 of Fort Morgan, a gain of 10. The Mustangs had a shot to make the play, could not. And now the Mustangs are in trouble, down to one timeout remaining. One timeout remaining. And the ball at the 45-yard line. Josh Langford has to get off that field. He's several yards into the field. He's the defensive coordinator, but and I know you want to communicate with your players. Now that clock is going to run. We're under three minutes to go in the game. They can't run it out yet. But another first down, this game is over. Yeah. One more first down, and the game is over. At the Fort Morgan 45, backs in an eye. This is going to be power football, which Roosevelt has been good at, waiting for the play clock to run down. Holding a 14 to 7 lead with a backs and an eye. Brock Saya hands it off. Counter. Deuce set. Crosses the 45 to the 43 before he stacked up there for a gain of two. And Daniel Serna made the first hit. Wow, that's a good spot for Fort Morgan. They only gave him a yard. Looked like he clearly got to the 43 instead of the 44. That'll be it. A first down will end this game. Because the yep. clock is now at. 2.34 to go. Yeah, Fort Morgan can't stop it now. They've used their last time out. So. Well, if they don't pick up a first down, they can run it down to about a minute to go. Yep. Mm -hmm. And if they run it down to a minute to go and it's near the 36-yard line, 35-yard line, you go for it. If it's near this 40 to 44-yard spot, then you're going to have to punt it. So it's second down and nine at the... 44-yard line. And again, this was an 82-yard drive in the fourth quarter for Roosevelt, aided by a big Fort Morgan penalty. And a fourth and seven, a 28-yard screen pass along the left sideline to Ryan Doucette that kept the drive going. He scored on the next play from five yards out. Second down and nine for the Mustang, 44 under center. Backs in an eye. Mustangs coming on a blitz, on a run blitz. Now they'll back off. You've got four up in the box, but they were sending as many as six earlier. Trying to take a chance on second and nine. There's the give, right side to Doucette. He stacked up at the 47 for a gain of two. Third down and seven to go. And <laughs> there are a pile of Mustangs, including Jesse Campa getting up off the bottom of the pile, making the play. Third and seven to go. Doucette is up to 84 yards on 13 carries. And this is it for Fort Morgan. Clock at 2.03 to go. Again, you can run it down to a minute. Yep. You can run it down to a minute. And then either punt or go for it on fourth down. Third and seven. This time, Saya is out of the gun. Running backs to his left and right. I, I think the quarterback's going to take off with this. On third down, Saya will keep the football up the middle, still driving short of a first down, but he's not far from it. At the 37. 17, Brock Saya on the keeper. Did somebody call a timeout? It's a gain. Yeah, why, why yeah, are you stopping the clock? 
I mean, that would help Fort Morgan. It's a gain of, let's see, five on the play for Brock Saya. Fourth down and two. They're going to go for it here, I would think. But they're yeah. going to let the clock run all the way down. I, I think the officials, man, what are they thinking out there? Why are you stopping the clock? Fort Morgan didn't have a timeout remaining. See if they run it down call a timeout. Yeah, that will happen. It'll be about a minute to go before they call a timeout. In fact, under a minute to go. Nope, it won't Not be under, under a minute. No, because the play clock is at two, is at one. There's the timeout. 101 to go in the game. 61 seconds to go. And Kevin, be the head coach here. What do you do? Head coach for which side? Roosevelt. Well, I mean, they're the one. They got the ball. I would uh, probably try and stretch it out to the side. You'd go for it here? I'd go for it, but I would go try and get out from the middle because you know Fort Warren's going to load everything in the box. So maybe have the quarterback right. fake it, bootleg out to the side. Yeah, they've so, been, they've so, been bringing everybody up the middle, so. Yeah, sell out. You know, you use what they're, Fort Morgan's doing against them. Yeah, okay. But I'd also be tempted to punt, you know. I mean, well, the thing is, is if Fort Morgan stops them here, they got a shot. Right. Even with no timeouts, you got a great passing game. But Fort Morgan has almost no shot if they have to start at their own 5 or 10 yard line. Right. No, you know, but I, you I go for the win. I don't think they would punt just because of the chance to get blocked. Right. You don't know. They're going to go for it. Fourth and two at the Mustang 37 yard line. This is a game of first down, would end it. You can't jump. Yep. This could be a hard count. Fort Morgan's got to be careful. This could be a hard count, and a hard count will give you the first down. And now Roosevelt calls back to back timeouts. Timeout. Because the game clock was winding down, and they didn't have time to try and make Fort Morgan jump. Uh, the strategy. Yeah, if I'm Roosevelt, I've got to believe my defense is going to be able to hold them. You know, we've held Fort Morgan to seven points in the entire game. Um, but That's a good things. point. That's another reason to go for it because if you don't score, I figure, hey, if we lose now up 14-7 to seven when they have not scored in the second half, then we don't deserve to win. Right. But they got their heavyweight. They've got like number 53 in it a blocking back which makes it seem like they're going to try and pack it up the middle um, all the more reason to have like a some sort of play fake you know play action pass or a bootleg well we should get a playoff here fourth and two at the fort morgan 37 roosevelt leads 14 to 7 one minute one second to go in the game Three in the backfield. The deep back is Cooper Walton. More than likely, he'll get the football unless Saya takes it himself. I'm sure he's going to have a hard count on fourth and two. Handoff. Walton left side. First down, and he breaks away, but he's going to be dragged down across the 30 to the 25, maybe the 24. And it's a gain of 12, and the Roosevelt Rough Riders will come away with a victory here. And that's what happens when you have a big back like that. You run a guy like that, and that's the way you win a football game yeah. against the previously now undefeated Fort Morgan Mustangs. Yeah. Nothing to hang your head about, though. Oh, they're, heck no. they're one of the best teams in the state. They just, they're just they going to get beat, by at least by the rankings, by the best team in the state. So um, you just can't hang your head, and you still have two games left in the season. So. Well, and Holy one, Family's starting to play pretty good here down the stretch, too. So I don't think Holy Family's going to be a slouch. No, not at all. And you have Northridge coming up on Thursday. And nice offense tonight, though. And you look at the numbers for Roosevelt, 370 yards of total offense. I mean, they certainly... They certainly put together a very representative performance. While Fort Morgan tonight, just looking at the numbers before we take a break here. Let's see, Wheatley in this game threw for 159 yards. So Fort Morgan tonight had 240 yards of offense to 370 and yet only lost the game 14 to 7. 
All right, let's do this. Let's take a two-minute break. We'll come back with two minutes because, gentlemen, it'll be a while before we're able to get out of this parking lot. Yeah. The Roosevelt Rough Riders are now 8-0. They defeat the Fort Morgan Mustangs in Fort Morgan. We'll come back with a recap right after this. Roosevelt 14, Fort Morgan 7 on B106 and the Eastern Plains Sports Network. Mustang Post Game Show is brought to you by Morgan Community College, here to make your dreams become a reality for both traditional and non-traditional students. Check them out at morgancc.edu. Along with Brian Nickel and Kevin Rohde, I'm John Beltran. The Roosevelt Rough Riders defeat the Fort Morgan Mustangs tonight. What a game. 14-7. to And in this game, he got two field goals from Kelly Parham from 30 and 32 yards in the second quarter. The first one 11 seconds into the quarter to make it 6-0. And then with 31 seconds to go before halftime, a 16-yard touchdown pass. That's 1-6 from Wheatley to Fajardo. The extra point made it 7-6. to six. Fort Morgan was just one play away with about five and a half minutes to go in the game. It was a fourth and seven for Roosevelt at the Mustang 33-yard line, I believe, in a 28-yard play, a 28-yard screen pass from... Brock side, Orion Doucette got the ball to the five, and Doucette scored on the next play. And, and the two-point conversion of the pass to Peterson made it 14-7. to seven, And that was the final score as Fort Morgan did get the ball one more time and got to the 41-yard line. But in a fourth and three, a pass to Marquez was broken up. And they just ran out the clock over the final four some odd minutes. For the visiting Rough Riders, 13 carries for 84 yards for Ryan Doucette, 2 for 8 for Ramirez. Brock Saya had 8 carries for 60 yards, including a 35-yarder. Cooper Walton, a big carry to end the game, as he had 5 carries for 27 yards, 2 for 13 for Clayton Robinson. Saya threw the air. He threw the ball 24 times in the game, and he completed 16 16 of 24 for 178 yards. And he was picked off once. The leading receiver, at least with receptions, was Kaiser. He had five receptions for 32 yards. But Tucker Peterson had four in the game for 70 yards for the Mustangs. The passing game not where they wanted it to be tonight. As Briggs Wheatley completed 10 of 25 he had 159 yards through the air. He did throw a pick. The leading receiver, Marquez, he had four receptions in the game for 54 yards. But Frank Ortega had three for 69. Wheatley had 14 carries for 75 yards. Frank Ortega had just a total of six yards on five carries, 81 yards rushing for the Mustangs tonight. So the rushing game is still not there, even against some so-so opponents. Fort Morgan falls to 6-1. and one. Roosevelt moves to 8-0. and oh. But again, Kevin, uh, Fort Morgan battled. And it, like Brian said, nothing to hang their heads about tonight. No, I, I think both teams are going to be a little sore tomorrow. And know As that expected. They know that they had a, a, a tough game. And Fort Morgan doesn't have anything to be, you know, like you say, hang your head. You know, listening to you talk, I think the one thing that really surprises me looking back on the game is the number of penalties and mistakes that both sides made. You know, you don't get to be number one and number four in the state playing that kind of football and making those kind of mistakes. So, you know, Fort Morgan cuts out a couple of those mistakes. They probably come away with a win. Uh, Roosevelt cuts out some of theirs. Maybe they win by another touchdown or two. It's just hard to tell, but they have to clean that up if they're going to go far into the playoffs. Well, Fort Morgan makes one play. One play, yeah. Brian, a screen pass. Out to Doucette, which was well executed. And one of the rare plays that Roosevelt ran with a quarterback under center. Yep. And Saya was some nice deception. And there was not a Mustang out there to guard Doucette once he caught that pass. And then, of course, you've got that big fullback in Cooper Walton. Able to run out the clock, getting a first down and a fourth and three. 370 yards of total offense for Roosevelt, 240 for Fort Morgan, but Brian, I think your assessment came with about three and a half, four minutes to go. As soon as Roosevelt scored, you went on a 
you had a, a two minutes of, of an ideal assessment of this team and the entire season and their prospects now for going deep in the playoffs based on the way they played tonight. Yeah, they have nothing to be ashamed of. They're, uh, you know, they're this was the number one team in the state that they played, and it, everything is bright. Everything is in front of them here. I mean, they're it's just, uh, you know, they just got to cut out the penalties. Um, they got two games left. You can't overlook those. They're not going to be easy. Northridge put 19 points on this team last week. Holy Family's coming on, and you want to go into the playoffs on a roll. You want to win these last two games. And, uh, you know, undoubtedly they will get a home field game to start off the playoffs with. But, um, you know, you want to be on the opposite side of the bracket from Roosevelt when it comes to it and try to meet them again in the playoffs. But you can't overlook the next two weeks. Had I told either one of you, regardless of the way the game played out, regardless of the way the game played out, that Roosevelt would win like 28-7, to I wouldn't have been surprised based on what's happened this year. No. No, not at all. I mean, Roosevelt was just this juggernaut that was running roughshod over every single team that they played. Yeah, they kind of got held down maybe for the first half, but they just wore people down and destroyed them in the second half. And Fort Morgan just went blow for blow with them the entire game. They have a lot to be proud of. It's like a heavyweight fight. They were just, yep, and... They got beat in the 12th round yeah. or 10th round, whatever it goes to, or 15th yeah, round back yeah. in our day when 15 rounds was allowed. Yeah. I mean, they got beat in the 15th round because of that fourth and uh, fourth and three play that was converted for a first down. And, you know, when you look at dominating opponents, their closest, closest margin of victory was 30 points over Meade. That's why 28 to set. And how many close victories like that has Fort Morgan had uh, or 30-point victories? Sure, they beat Conifer, but... Even Brush was a 23-point game. Scott's Bluff was a 17-point victory. Uh, Discovery Canyon, they beat by 14. Mountain View, yeah. they beat by 21, even though that was a, a late touchdown for Mountain View. It was really more of a 28-point game. So what I'm saying is that Fort Morgan had some double-digit wins that did not get up to the 30 points, which was Roosevelt's closest win going into tonight. That's the level of dominance that Roosevelt yeah. has displayed this season. So I'm sure... Even though I know these coaches probably despise moral victories, you hit the nail on the head, Brian. Tonight is not as important as what right. could happen in three or four weeks. Yeah, you've, this this game you could afford to lose. It'd be nice to win. You're going to get into the playoffs. You got to play good in these last two weeks and play. You know, go on a roll, and uh, hopefully you get to meet them again in the playoffs and beat them then. All right, Kevin will be back with us here in about uh, in the final game of the regular season against Holy Family. Brian and I will be with you on Thursday night. It's a Thursday night game with the Fort Morgan Mustangs take on the Northridge Grizzlies and three games remaining at home, including tonight's game. But the Mustangs go down to defeat. The Colorado Prep Scoreboard Show is coming up here. It's already underway. We'll pick that up in progress. For Brian Nickel and Kevin Rohde, I'm John Beltran. The final score tonight, the number one ranked Roosevelt Rough Riders rally to beat the Fort Morgan Mustangs in a five-yard touchdown run by Ryan Doucette in the fourth quarter, 14-7. And you heard it right here on Morgan County's B106 and the Eastern Plains Sports Network.